Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call this meeting to order of the Mayor and Board of Commissioners for December the 22nd, 2015. Will you rise with me for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will you bow your heads with me for a brief prayer? Father God, I come to you tonight on behalf of the town of Rising Sun. I ask that you watch over our citizens, God, and the people before us at, on this board. I hope you continue to make them serve in a Christ-like way and watch over them and their families during this Christmas season. Be with those that are in need and our troops serving overseas. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I did want to say this before the uh, town approval of minutes. Uh, like many of you, I've come down with a seasonal um, cold. If I do lose my voice, I've asked Commissioner Warnick uh, to take over. Uh, I'm not feeling very well, so if you see me pop some halls or uh, drink, uh, I do apologize for the rudeness. Uh, I'm just not feeling well tonight. Uh, first on the agenda is our December the 9th, 2015 town meeting. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Could we get the roll call, please? Yes, sir. Could I get the roll call, please? Vice Mayor Warnick. Here. Commissioner Alderweed. Here. Commissioner, War uh, Commissioner Shepard. Here. Commissioner Shear. Here. And Mayor Marion. Here. All present. Thank you. Can I get the approval of town minutes from the December the 9th, 2015 town meeting? I move that we approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Thank you. Next on the agenda is public presentations, and that is Ordinance 2015-04, which is our fire code adoption, and that is the town administrator. <clears throat> Thank you, Matt. Um, as the board knows, at the um, last meeting, we introduced the uh, Ordinance 2015-04. We had read it into the uh, minutes at that time also. As a recap, this is essentially an adoption of NFPA 1, uh, fire code adoption, and in your packets, um, uh, Jane Bellmeyer had provided me with this news release. You see it in your packet, which is essentially nothing more than the state of Maryland Fire Marshal's office announcing what I had talked about is that they are updating uh, the fire prevention code to move towards the uh, 2015 series of NFPA codes. Um, as I had said at the last meeting, because we have some newcomers here to this meeting, back in 2007, 2007 8, the town of Rising Sun elected to enforce uh, all building codes and fire codes in the town of Rising Sun. And at that time, the town had adopted the international series of codes. As I explained at the last meeting, there's about 12 or 13 different codes covering the plumbing code, mechanical code, energy code, building code, residential code, etc. And there's also an international fire code in there. And um, at that time, we adopted the international fire code as opposed to the NFPA fire prevention code because when you are enforcing the building codes, there are often references to things having to be built in accordance to a fire code. And it's more, you can make an argument that it's more seamless to have your building codes referring back to the International Fire Code because they're all designed to fit like a glove on a hand. Um, however, um, as I had also stated at that time, there are basically two major code pro proclamating uh, organizations in the country, one being the international codes and the other one being the NFPA. And the NFPA more or less specializes in life safety and fire codes. So when you're talking about the installation of, for instance, there was a new 500 gallon propane tank installed down at the Sitco, um gas station down the street here they would be following the NFPA standards for uh, propane tank insulation. When I looked that up in the building code to issue the building permit and see what the requirements are, 
that particular NFPA code is one that is referenced in the building code. So instead of these code agencies fighting against one another and reproducing the same language, they sort of uh, try to make them as seamless as possible because they do have to coexist in the code enforcement world. However, um, now that we are on the verge of getting out from underneath the sewer and water moratorium, and as I've talked at so many meetings, we have a lot of people coming in wanting to develop. We're having some exciting things done at the <coughs> library, Jane's Church. Um, we've had Martins in the past. All these uh, bigger entities, more than just residential homes, are coming in to build, and that's triggering a lot of fire code issues and to make it a lot easier for contractors who come into the town of Rising Sun to do business, it just makes sense to adopt the NFPA uh, one code and the life safety code um, to make it more of a seamless transition to anyone who's coming into the town of Rising Sun and to also make it um, consistent between what the county is enforcing from a fire code standpoint and what we are enforcing from a fire code standpoint. Um, the NFPA, as you remember me saying, the NFPA might have over a thousand different standards, books that you know, could pretty much fill the room for the most part. You don't have to adopt all of those individual standards. All you have to do is adopt NFPA 1, and NFPA 1 in itself adopts all those other standards. So to stay consistent with what the state fire marshal's office does, we are adopting NFPA 1, which adopts all those other codes to include um, the life safety code. So that, in a nutshell, is what this code adoption is about. Can I get a motion to approve Ordinance 2015-04? So move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of adopting? Aye. Aye. Passes. Thank you. <coughs> Next on the agenda is Ordinance 2015-06, which is a property maintenance code. Town Administrator. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Um, as a lot of people in this room are well aware, this, is, this has been an ongoing obstacle or mountain for the Town of Rising Sun to climb for many years now. Um, we do not, as our community is evolving and growing, um, also, and actually, when we're turning into such a large rental population, too, we've talked about that before, when you start to get over 33% of your housing stock turning into rental, that is sort of the tipping point of a lot of other things that begin to happen. And one of those things is property maintenance or the lack thereof. And as we've talked about before, that for most people, the investment that you have in your home is your biggest bargaining or poker chip in life. For instance, if you have a daughter or uh, a, a young adult that's getting married and you want to pay for the wedding, sometimes people need the equity that's in their home to be able to go out and refinance, get a home equity loan, whatever. If you want to pay for your kid's education, that's your home is that big investment that enables you to do the things you want to do in your life. Well, as we know, the value of your home is based upon others' opinions to some degree. One, it's based upon the sale price of homes in the area of like condition, but it's also based upon perceptions. And perceptions that can work against somebody is that you can take uh, two identically built homes and put them at totally different locations in the town of Rising Sun one can be consistent with all of the other homes in that area, and it can have an appraised, or a, uh, an appraised value of XYZ. You put that home in another area that just happens to have a rundown house next to it or a vacant property or abandoned vehicles or they never cut their grass, that's what they call curb appeal. And we all talk about that when you talk about curb appeal and, and, the, and, and how your house is valued. Well, the local municipality, which is common throughout the country, has the ability and the responsibility, if it so chooses, to try to protect the investment of its residents and the investments that they make in their homes. 
by enforcing general standard codes such as you can't have your yard littered with abandoned vehicles. You can't have your gutters falling off your house forever. You can't have, uh, banks can't have vacant properties that they foreclosed on. And because it's not in their money pipeline to do anything about it, they let that house sit next to your house for two, three years. And that is the average, Commissioner Warnick, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the average house sits in foreclosure uh, vacant for up to two and a half to three years is the latest industry reports. No. So just so just go down the road in your, in your own development and around you and look at houses and man, you know they moved out two years ago and nothing's happening with the property. Nobody's cutting the grass, no, no, nobody's cleaning it up. And so there are what I like to call tools in the tool shed to give the elected body or the community <clears throat> itself the ability to protect itself from that. And that, generally speaking, is a property maintenance code. And over the last couple of months, we've had people come in here and voice just utter frustration to the elected body about abandoned vehicles. We have our main street out here, some of our properties, you know, we, we often comment about how bad they look. It's absentee owners. They're not at least keeping the property up. And when people drive by your community and they, they have a negative opinion about it, that's a negative opinion on all of us. Um, so this property maintenance code that I read in at the last um, meeting basically aims to finalize things like how high your grass can be. Can, can you let your grass go 14, 16, 18 inches without it getting cut? How many, how many winters do we deal with people just outraged over sidewalks not being cleared uh, efficiently and quickly of snow? Now we're going to have language to be able to do that. How many times, you know, just in your area do you see a rental property where the landlord doesn't even live in the area and they're not keeping it up? It's those types of things that we're looking to correct. Um, one of the things that we did do... Um, <coughs> From, from my experience, um, we basically took the International Property Maintenance Code and we've turned it into a document. Now, I'm always single-sided. The elected body has a double-sided a double version. But one of the problems with the International Code is when they create this code, they create it as a one-size-fits-all. So somebody in Idaho can adopt this, somebody in Boston can adopt it, they can do it. But it's not, it's, it's not user-friendly to what our conditions might be. The other issue with it is it will have language in here that you can't have peeling paint on the front of your house. Well, how much peeling paint is too much peeling paint? We're not looking to drive down the street and get people for flakes of paint coming off the house. But we do want to have some criteria. And so in here, we talk about percentages of peeling, face, of peeling paint on any building face itself. If the roof needs to be replaced, you know, we have some contractors, construction people, you can drive down the road and know when somebody should be replacing the roof and it looks all unsightly. But the building code just says that all shingles must be in good, good sound state. So one wrinkled shingle, flipped up shingle, could easily trigger something that we really don't want. So the code that we've been working on that goes back many years and has been viewed a, a million times over is to try to put some safety measures in there so that we're not going too far with some of these code issues, but we're, we're meeting the issues and concerns of our residents. Um, one of the things that came up recently that I want to let you know how we addressed was the issue of um, pro, uh, generators being ran in the house. And we've had this issue for about the last month and a half now. And our police department's been scratching their head because, you know, for the most part, unless the kids in the house are overcome by the carbon monoxide, there's not a whole lot that we can do, although it's, it's widely recognized that you shouldn't be running generators in the house. So um, if you remember at the last meeting, I had come up with some language for generators <coughs> And it was a little bit too um, far-reaching, so I modified it. And if you guys have your document in front of you, I'll show you on page 67. And Jane, this exactly comes up at the meeting. You had raised a question about kerosene heaters because our original language said you couldn't have any carbon monoxide 
producing equipment in your home. And Jane had asked me, well, what about kerosene heaters? And we have a section in our code that allows kerosene heaters if they're used in accordance to underwriter laboratory standards. And so what I did was to make sure that, that we didn't create a contradiction in our language and, and create confusion to that. So we changed the language and you'll see there's a new section 709.2 that talks about fuel equipment and it says fuel equipment including but not limited to motorcycles, mopeds, lawn care equipment, portable generators and portable cooking equipment shall not be stored, operated or repaired within a building and then it goes on to talk about some of the exceptions here and one of those is kerosene heaters and then if you go to page 68 under section 710 emergency power and standby, there's a whole new section regarding portable generators. And it says portable generators shall not be operated or refueled within buildings or on balconies or on roofs. We sort of forgot about that. You can have apartment buildings where somebody could be setting up a, a generator out on a, on a balcony and that can create a problem for the, the, the tenant next door to that. So this is not anything we're creating, this is industry recognized language here. Um, you can operate generators in a building. Uh, portable generators shall be permitted to be operated or refueled in a building or room that has been constructed for such use in accordance with the building code. Refueling um, there's a section, portable generators shall not be fueled from a handheld container or similar temporary fueling supply while running. Only after the engine is shut down and engine surface temperature is below the auto ignition temperature of the fuel shall fueling from a handheld container or similar temporary fueling supply be permitted. And then there's a section on exhaust. Portable generators shall be positioned so that the exhaust is directed as follows, at least five feet in any direction away from an opening or air intake and away from the uh, uh, building in general. So this is going to give us the opportunity to, to, to do what we've all sort of quietly have been hoping we could get the legislation done sooner than later before we have a disaster um, in this home. And one of the things I, I want to throw out here right now is that, um, number one, there's nothing in here about rental. There's no rental licensing. There's no property transfer. But one of the things that generally people as a whole need to understand that our, all our constituents want to be treated equally, and they all have their concerns. So although we don't talk about rental properties per se, there is language in here that protects the tenant from things that as homeowners you might make a clear decision on wanting to do and if you, for instance insect screens you know Commissioner Lashier had, had pointed this out if you as a homeowner decide in the summertime that you don't have central air and you don't have an air conditioner and you want to open up your window and the bugs come in your house that's on you but what about the tenant who doesn't really want that, has no air conditioning, has no way of ventilating the house. They're forced to open up the window, but the landlord won't provide them with a simple screen for the window. This puts us in a position, not where we're driving down the street looking for missing screens. We're able to deal with tenants, and we get those complaints about my landlord's not providing me with something. So there's a little bit of rental language in here, but it's only for the tenant who feels that their best interests are not being met by the landlord running the property or operating the property. So that is, in a nutshell, the uh, property maintenance. Thank you, Town Administrator. Can I get a motion to approve Ordinance 2015-06? So move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I will say on a personal note, and I'm just speaking for myself, that um, Commissioner uh, Warnick and Arthur Reef will both know that this is a long time coming. This is something that we've spoken about and spoken about uh, for a long time. Um, and this is something that um, I remember coming to a town meeting and saying that I'd spoken to uh, business owners that were uh, in the strip across from Town Hall here, and I had basically said, you know, we're willing to help you um, to be able to update your buildings, especially when we have town events, um, and none of them were interested at that time. But the one thing that I, I do think it is important 
um, is the town, town administrator, all of us up here are willing to work with building owners. This isn't something that we're just going to throw in their face and say, you know, you have to abide by this. We're willing to work with people, but we do want to see a change. It is important. Um, so any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Passes, thank you. Next is a sewer and water mediation legal update. That's Commissioner Lushier. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On uh, December 8, 2015, at 10 a.m., there was a final mediation session before trial for the HRI lawsuit against the town. Uh, if anybody, everybody's familiar, HRI is ha Howard Robinson. They uh, started uh, construction at the sewer plant before Wickersham came in. Um, <clears throat> Howard, Howard, HRI, Howard Robinson, actually terminated the construction contract, um, and the result was a claim of $3 million that was sued against the town. Um, and mo most of their claim was centered around delays and also an alleged 90-day suspension of work put on them by the town. Uh, Commissioner Warnick, uh, Calvin Bonneberger, and myself were present along with our town attorneys and an expert witness at the uh, mediation. Um, initially, the mediation was expected to not be very fruitful. There was at least one or two others that I wasn't involved with beforehand. But around 4 p.m., we were making progress. Um, at that time, we made the decision to go ahead and cancel the public meeting. I think everybody remembered um, at that because we needed to more or less bring the other commissioners into play to be able to make a decision since uh, Commissioner Warnick and myself couldn't make decisions basically by ourselves. So we brought in at that time uh, commissioners Austin Reith and Shepard to meet us so the negotiations can, could continue. They actually completed that night at 11.30 p.m. During the mediation, that if we could not come to terms, we were faced with basically going to court. And uh, going to court would involve several weeks of discovery and several weeks of trial. Uh, basically, uh, you know, th if anybody's been involved with any kind of trial, you know, if we went to trial, we would effectively be closing town hall just basically because of all the Calvin that would be needed, all the employees that would be needed going through discovery and going through several weeks of trial. And our estimated legal costs just to successfully defend the case were upwards of $600,000. Um, that doesn't even include if we were to actually uh, lose the case and also the cost of the claim. Now, going with the trial, you know, I mean, we all watch different shows on TV and whatnot. There's a lot of variables when you go to trial. It's not just the facts. It doesn't really matter who has the best case. A lot of things you got to be concerned about is what the judge will actually allow the performance of your witnesses, the performance of your expert witnesses, how the jury will take uh, and react to the information, this all makes a difference. Uh, going into the mediation, we felt very confident that the town did have a defensible case just based upon the facts alone. Unfortunately, we were burdened by actions of several different past elected officials when it came to the sewer plant. Um, one of HRI's biggest claims was for a 90-day suspension of the project imposed by the town. Now, they, there were delays, and they were all centered around the Headworks building. And if anybody's familiar with the sewer plant, the Headworks is basically just the section where the sewer pipe comes under Route 1, comes into the plant, and that's where debris could be removed. And all the delays were centered around just a roof for the structure. And basically, right now, the structure has a roof that's similar to what's at the Pavilion of Veterans Park. Um, in the contract, HRI had the right to terminate the agreement if the town imposed a 90-day or more suspension of the project. Yeah, there, there's a copy of that actually right here. So if the town proposed, uh, excuse me, if the town imposed a 90-day or more suspension of the project, and basically at that point, HRI could terminate the contract and be awarded damages. Calvin, can you play the video? And this is actually a video that was played for us by HRI's attorneys. Can you report on the, the progress uh, of the sewer plan? The progress? Yeah. The, well, the, there was a three-month delay in construction. There, there, there was a delay in the three-month construction uh, due to design and regulatory issues um, with, with the state and making everything conform. Um, and it is, it is moving, well, if you go out there today, they're, they're still not 
working on things was part of that four hour followed by the two hour meeting was to move things forward. Part of Calvin's background work after those meetings was to get answers so things could start moving along again. But we were paying $1,700 a day for no progress. It's, it's, it's all, um, I'm really trying to wrap my arms around this. I work in a regulatory environment and it's not easy. But wait, I, I, I'm getting there. So, yeah, it's been down for three months. But with, in working with the construction company, it's all what they bill you for. And so they're going to bill us for four weeks of that time, of, of, of downtime. And that's a lot. I'm not going to negate that that's not a lot. And I've asked the design company to keep moving. Let's get some designs out there. Let's get these guys to work. We don't need this. This downtime is not good. We have deadlines to make. We reviewed the deadlines. So we are getting answers. We're getting things back rolling again. I've, I've asked them and I've given them, you know, pushed hard. Is that what you were looking for? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Marion. Thank you, Okay. That, that was actually, go ahead. Yeah, Commissioner Zlishir, I was actually there at that meeting. I'm going to point out a couple of things about that video real quick, if you don't mind me interrupting. Sure, go ahead. Um, first of all, that was Ms. Duggar's second meeting that she had ever been to, or I'm sorry, second meeting as an elected official, third meeting she'd ever attended for the town. Um, I was actually videotaping that meeting, interestingly enough. Uh, the, if you notice, there's a point at which Mr. Bonnenberger tries to interject and add information into that and I actually remember her shutting him down you actually hear that in the video clip uh, additionally you'll also notice she turns to Mr. Fisher at the end and says um, you know basically is that what you're looking for I don't know exactly what that means but I mean it kind of it, there's there's an interaction there that I don't know exactly what was going on but I can tell you that their attorneys we were trying to make a point of it that this was proof that we had a, a suspension. And, and we were, you know, considering that along with other factors and um, as far as, uh, you know, this being played in front of a jury. So, right. I'm sorry. A big part of their case was the, you know, this is directly from one of their slides, you know, the three month suspension confirmed by Duggar um, as their right to go ahead and cancel. You know, honestly, going back through the job logs, there was no period where work, three months where work didn't occur. Um, actually looking at the job logs, which is a summary right here. The job logs from May 2013 and February 2014, they show activity every single month. Uh, going into the mediation, we had to consider the impact of statements made by the prior elected officials, you know, how they'd affect the jury. Uh, we also had to consider the impact uh, made, you know, once these different individuals were put on the stand. For the plaintiff you know with the knowledge of hri's case that included statements from past elected officials and the knowledge of the cost of defending this case um, the board negotiated a settlement to avoid an actual trial the total negotiating time for that single session was approximately 38 man hours for just the board of four people uh, this amount of time was really needed to get residents the best possible outcome at the end of the day, the claim of $3 million was successfully negotiated down to a settlement of 600000 With damning evidence such as the video showed, we uh, worked very hard to keep everyone at the negotiating table to facilitate a settlement. Uh, the silver lining is that the town does have the funds available as part of the USDA loan for the existing sewer plant to pay the, to pay the settlement. And also, uh, the, this board, just to let everybody know, this board is really committed to moving the town forward and successfully negotiating something like this that's been lingering over the town, you know, is just an example of that. If you don't mind, I'd also like to point out that some of the factors that went into this, um, I appreciate Mr. Uh, Commissioner Lashier's uh, update on that and report, but um, one of the factors that heavily weighed on us uh, in addition to the, you know, what it was going to cost to defend this and if we lost the potential of, you know, damage to the town, the mediator came in and basically, you know, we were pretty ready to say, look, we're not, you know, we think we have a strong case here. And he said that he agreed on a contractual standpoint that the case had some merit. But the big thing I think that he pointed out that, like, had everybody kind of really taken aback was, 
he basically said that we were likely in breach of contract and a judge would more than likely see it that way because the town had only completed about 12 percent progress in a year and the contract was only a two-year contract so how do you get through only 12 percent in one year and still accomplish you know the full contract in a two-year term um, so it you know it, it was at that point i think that it started to become clear that our case was you know certainly not as firm as we thought it was um, you know, the mediator actually brought out a few points in that respect. Uh, he also, I think, kind of gave us some, uh, some kind of like, you know, and he was actually very experienced in construction lawsuits. He was actually a special, that was a specialty, but, um, you know, he, and whatever he's telling us, he's also telling the other side. So, I mean, you know, it's not like he's telling us that and, it, and he's not our attorney. So when he tells us that, he's going into the other side and saying, hey, I think you guys have a strong case on breach of contract. That's how you should handle it. So it's, you know, if he's bringing that up to us, we know he's taking it to the other side. So that means they're now thinking about it. And um, so that became certainly a factor. The other factor is what we looked at was, you know, our legal costs alone, given the legal costs. And, you know, we're going to be roughly around where the settlement was. Uh, if we lost, the mediator felt pretty firm that we probably had about 1.1 $1 to 1 1.4 million in exposure out of that 3 million that the, there were a number of things that he felt they were reaching a little bit on, but he felt pretty solid that there was over a million dollars in exposure. So we could have been exposed to as much as between legal costs and the um, losing the lawsuit around $2 million. Mr. Warnick, can I also add, <clears throat> remember folks, that was the night of our December 8th town meeting that we've heard a lot of uh, innuendos that um, extenuating circumstances were the phrase we had to use that night because we weren't at liberty to say exactly what we were doing we had gathered for an executive session and that executive session uh, turned out to be part of the mediation event had we ended the mediation and returned we'd have lost all the traction that we'd already gained with the uh, legal attorneys from the other side um, plus we'd had to pay everybody to come back another day and hope that we could regain that traction. And not to mention also that we couldn't do it here at Town Hall because there's no room for this type of uh, a meeting to take place. So we also need to thank uh, Wagner Associates for letting us use their two conference rooms because during mediation, uh, the parties are kept separate. We had a mediator and as we all know, this, this, this cost just would have kept going up and up and up. And so we Commissioner Rothenruth also would have gone into discovery had we not, like discovery would have started the next day, at which point we would have been tied up starting to do discovery. Um, you know, we don't even, I don't even want to ponder what may have come out during discovery based on watching that video clip alone and how they were spinning that, so. And not, and not to mention that this has been going on for quite some time. Our legal um, uh, advisors for this have been getting paid the whole time also. So it was time to wrap this thing up uh, with the four of us uh, there. We had a good, strong team. When we came in, I think it showed the HRI and Assurity uh, team that um, we were all here. We were all together. We were ready to make decisions and take action and finalize this. And we, did, we were there till 1130 that night. Uh, we wound up ha having to have dinner there, and, and none of us were expecting to be away from home that night. And we, the four of us, had to get up the next morning and go to work still. So, uh, but we got it done. That's that's the main thing. It's done, and I think we came in at a good price for our end. And it's time we can move on past uh, this uh, thing with the sewer plant. It's up, running. Uh, we've got warranty, and we've got some closure to a long-standing. Uh, lawsuit that's been hanging over our head. That's all I have. Commissioner Lashier, uh, go ahead. I'll say another thing I'd also <laughs> like to point out is, um, I mean, there were, when we talk about elected body, there was also discussion around the uh, lawsuit filed or the injunction filed by um, our former mayor. That conversation came up during the uh, presentation put on by, I mean, so there, there's been a whole, I mean, there were a whole number of things. It would have played out very poorly to a jury. I mean, it, it paid out, played out very poorly to us. So, um, you know, I, I like it was, it was not an easy decision. We didn't take it lightly by any means. I mean, 
I probably use some language in an executive session that's not appropriate for executive sessions, but um, you know, it was nonetheless, when it came down to it, really the best of a bad situation, the best choice that we really had available to us. And uh, yeah. One thing I will say is you were able to negotiate the cost down to right around the amount that you, you said would cost us to go to court anyways. So, Correct. I mean, it would have cost us this to go to court and fight this. Plus, that's not including shutting down town hall. Correct. I mean, if we had had to send a town administrator to court for two or three weeks, along with possibly Marsha. Right. Um, town administrator, go ahead. Now, one of the things I'd, I'd also, I'd like to sort of put from a layman's perspective for the residents to um, sort of grab on to some of the things that have been said here. As Commissioner Warnick suggested, um, one of the things going against the town was um, during a time period, only 12% of the project had been completed. Although there were over, there was over a million dollars of payments made, 12% is a number that, you know, you, you can make numbers do all kinds of stuff, but that's the number we were faced with, 12%. And when you sit and look at that, that means that as of July of 2014, because that's when the new contractor came on the job, if we accept that 12% as being gospel, as of July of 2014, only 12% of the project was complete. And we just got done talking about injunctions and legal wranglings and all the nonsense that we've always talked about that just plagued this town for two years involving that project, all the letters that had to be sent to the contractor saying, these are the people you need to talk to, this is who you need to take the directions from. So as of July of 2014, 12% of the project was done. We had to get the project done by September of 2015. So basically, what's that, 15 months? We had 15 months to get the remaining, uh, what, 80, 88% of the project done. As part of the first mediation process, there was discussion about allowing the original contractor to come back and finish the project. That contractor wanted a lot of money to come back on the job, and they wanted a four-month extension because they said they could not get the project done. And part of our contention all along was that we felt that they were doing things deliberately to stall this project, and they were playing into all the rhetoric that was coming out of our house. They were using that to try to leverage the town. And so 12% done in July, contractor wants a whole lot more money. They want an extension of time until January of 2016. However, we got a new contractor on site and got it done by August of 2015, not September of 2015. So the point is, once all the rhetoric was out of the way, once all the nonsense was out of the way, the project was done expeditiously within budget and, you know, at a timely manner. So I think that's important to also let people know. But Just how impactful that two-year period was to the town of Rising Sun. Thank you, Town Administrator. Commissioner Lishier, Ordinance 2015, Social Media and Information Technology. Thank you, Mayor Marion. Uh, so many might already know that this uh, ordinance has generated a lot of buzz on Facebook. Um, I'm not quite sure it's one of the most innocuous ones we have. Uh, more or less, this is to go ahead and put some measures in place to help protect the town and still allow people to go ahead and post and do different things. Um, the board has decided that for right now we're not, I don't know if tabling is the right word, but we're going to actually vote on this into the new year. Um, this past weekend I was here at Town Hall. If anybody wanted to come and some, ask any questions, I'll be here again on January 2nd from 12 to 2 if anybody wants to come by. Um, that's no problem. The document, I think, is nine pages, and two pages of that is probably the standard legalese that's on every ordinance. So as of right now, we're going to go ahead and hold this off until the new year. And it is posted online, correct? Uh, it's definitely on Facebook. Is it on the town web page? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, it's so people can read it. If anybody wants to look, read it, and if they have any questions, feel free to give me a call. Ordinance 2015, town records, proper storage public access, retention, and disposal. That was a long one. Go ahead, town administrator. 
Uh, Mayor, mm -hmm. the, the report for both 07 and 08 is the same. Um, this all ties into, I mean, look, guys, the presentation we just gave tonight about records and uh, proper conduct and speaking and uh, <clears throat> inappropriate information getting out there, it just cost the town $600,000. And these ordinances that are in place or that we were moving towards were ordinances and documents that were recommended by our town attorney who quite frankly, and our insurance attorney who quite frankly is tired of coming in and trying to talk us off a ledge because we do things that people file suits against us and we, we have, we're starting to collect some suits because of misappropriate, inappropriate comments. And we also have issues with, um, you know, we're getting ready to move forward with um, legal action against the uh, developers of Lion Drive and the people associated with that. You know, Facebook is a wonderful tool. We put a lot of information out there. We've gotten a lot of residents that have said, I'm tired of us having to pay for this stuff. Can you do something about this? And so part of that was we need to get our town records uh, and, and uh, records retention up and running. Um, but there's just been a lot of distractions over the last month or so, and we haven't been able to get that language where we need it to be. But a couple questions, you know, that, that I've heard some people suggest, will you just go to electronic storage? That does not that does not cover you for your records. Just because you electronically scan something does not mean that the state will allow you to dispose of it. You still have to keep it. And then there are other things that are much larger that you can't openly scan. And then thirdly, if you're going to scan those records and keep it off-site or even store those records off-site, you're talking about going to facilities, you know, somewhere else in the state or another state away and that are kept in a giant warehouse and you don't get the luxury of going in and saying, how did they file, so I wonder how they filed something back in 2000, a document that we really need. And we're dealing with that right now because we want to hold the bank responsible for Brian's grace. We have a developer that's walking away from over $400,000 of money that's owed the town of Rising Sun for a bad development. And we have a bank who's saying, we're not giving you that money because you can't produce a document from 2003 that has a signature from somebody on the town from it. And so that's, you know, when residents come and ask legitimate questions about what are you doing, we need to stop this kind of bleeding, that's what these documents are about, is to stop that. And, and they're coming upon the recommendation of the insurance company who's tired of paying just, claims. And we can't just produce an electronic copy of that document. It has to be the original signed copy. Yes. So we could never get rid of that document until it's expired. Yes. So my point is... Um, we, we don't have the language together yet. We have draft copies. It's nothing that I've submitted to the board yet. We were hoping to get, you know, get them done, but we're not ready. But it, this isn't something that we can afford to let sit. Whatever we do, we can gut it. We can change the language. We can do whatever you want. We just need to do something because we can't keep the financial exposure that we've incurred over the last couple of years in play. And, so. and I mean, on this note, I think this is actually, a, you know, a big top. I mean, the topic's a lot bigger than just this. Um, you know, one of the things is we've been trying to find this document for quite a while, and it's hopefully somewhere in this building, but we really don't know where. Um, you know, another point is, is, you know, as Commissioner Lashier pointed out, or I'm sorry, Commissioner Althamreath pointed out, we are, you know, we've had to lock people out of town hall in order to condu conduct executive sessions up here a month and a half ago. We had to move the sewer plant negotiation to uh, Patty Wagner's office because of the, you know, requirement for space. We've had sewer plant, or well, I'm sorry, water line negotiations occur up here on the third floor in a public space, you know, where anybody could have walked in during multi-million dollar negotiations. And, um, you know, there's really just not a place that's appropriate to meet. Uh, we had a uh, conference room at some point a while ago that was about 15 and a half by 13 and a half feet. Um, and 
Calvin, I mean, if you had that one presentation I put together. We've, we've taken a pretty good beating over the last week or so um, regarding our conference room. So if you want to pull up that presentation and go to the... Let me get my act together here. Okay. Well, while we're waiting, uh, Commissioner Warnick, could I add that uh, on the Cecil Bank negotiations, that started with I and uh, Commissioner Scully uh, last summer and has kind of, and when they said, okay, we know there's something, produce the document, we've kind of been at a standstill to that point, and I'll be looking to move forward with those negotiations as soon as we're ready in the new year to start back up, and I'll need um, another commissioner with me on that. Now, go to the third slide real quick. Or the fourth slide. Commissioner Warnick, before we, just so we're clear, I mean, we're, it's, we're talking, I mean, uh, if everybody understands, I mean, it was, you know, a $400,000 letter of credit that was lost that meant almost half a million dollars to the town. <laughs> Commissioner Lashier, the, the letter exists, right. but it's funny how the signed copy, there's tons of copies right. of this letter, uh, but there's no signed copy. Um, and Cecil Bank originally contacted us about clearing up their records. We didn't go looking for them. So when they came to us, that's our leverage. That, that letter does exist. A signed copy exists. Uh, it could be in that mess in the basement someplace, or it could be down there damaged, destroyed. And we can't have that because a electronic version just wouldn't cut it. It has to be the original. We know it exists, and we're going to find it and, and resume this because um, th this is our job as representatives of the Rhine uh, residents of not only what happened at Rhine Drive, but Brian's Grace to track this down. Commissioner Warnick. So this was the original conference room configuration. It was actually these tables that were in the executive conference room. Um, it was in a U-shaped. You could get somewhere, you know, I, I mean, we had planning and zoning meetings in there a couple times where there was, you know, seven planning and zoning members. There was uh, the town administrator, um, the town attorney, you know, probably about 10 people, and you could probably squeeze about another chair or two in. So roughly 12 people could fit in that room. Not an ideal situation, honestly. It was, it was a little tight, but you could fit about 10 to 12 people in it. So if we want to go to the, uh, back to the first slide. That one right there. So there's been a lot of discussion recently about, um, you know, taking away of someone's office. And I, I, I hate to, I'm, it pains me that we're doing this conversation. But um, I wanted to first point out that it wasn't just like we simply took away somebody's office. We actually have a conference room and what was intended to be a shared office space on the second floor. And as you can see, there's a conference room table. And at the back, you can see there's a desk. and you know, frankly, we, you know, the mayor had kind of personalized that space and really just nobody was that worried about it. I mean, I, I, that's fine. It didn't really matter to me. But what we've been finding is this space has been insufficient to meet. So if you notice, I mean, you know, there's a bunch of chairs kind of just shoved into the room, but you could sit about seven people, eight people comfortably at the very most. And we've been consistently having meetings with 12 people or so. So we had considered knocking out the wall into the hallway that's about where I'm standing and expanding that area so that it would be into the hallway and you know reconfiguring that area but what we ran into was if we tried to reconfigure that area that there's a kitchen immediately adjacent and that wall to that kitchen just to the if you go down to the right has plumbing in it so it would be a significant cost to remove that wall move that sink anything like that so we started considering you know, what are the other options? And this conversation, by the way, came from a $400,000 letter of credit. It came from the ability to have negotiations in town hall and things. It, it was actually discussed a couple of times in executive sessions that, frankly, the mayor didn't attend. Um, the, so we started looking at just to, just kind of off to the side of this picture, was a wall, or is a wall that goes into, and Calvin, if you go to the next slide, this is kind of from a doorway, for a panoramic, but to the very left-hand side, there's a couple presentations or plaques up on the wall, and that hallway actually goes into the second-floor storage room, file room. 
Um, that was actually when this building was built, that was originally the police evidence room where the conference room now is, was the police chief's office. And uh, chief, I think you may have even been in that office originally. Mm -hmm. And the office next to it was on the town hall plans from, 19, or from 2002, it says mayor and commissioner's office. It was a drop-in office intended for the elected body. So what we looked at was we could easily remove that wall into that storage area and put a wall up that would allow us to relocate the storage area to where into that smaller section of the current conference room and elected body's office. Now, doing that, unfortunately, we just didn't have any other, I mean, this building, you know, it, we talk about all the time how the elevator is in a horrible location in this building. We talk about, I mean, it's, it's funny because some of the comments I saw were, you know, that great big building, we couldn't find another place. And I, I, I kind of was like struck by that because the third floor is the meeting room and historic commission. The first floor is basically the police department, which shoves the entire town administration onto the second floor of this great big building, right, if we're to use that language. So what we considered was um, that, you know, we could actually take out that wall, take out the walls into the hallway in front of that conference room, and create a 16 by 17 room. So we started having discussions around that, and we discussed, um, you know, where do we put the storage? So the current storage room is about uh, 13 feet deep and about uh, eight feet wide or so, and then it, it actually has a little dog leg. So it's about this part and this dog leg here of the room. So honestly, the space that we're looking to relocate the storage into is only slightly larger than the current storage space, but it doesn't require us to change any plumbing. It really minimizes because the vent work is still similar to the way it was when it was a police chief's office. We don't have to reconfigure a lot of vent work. We actually don't even have to move any key, like the fob doors, because the one door is already fobbed. The new door we're going to put into the conference room doesn't require a fob because it's a conference room. We really don't have to lock it. Um, it's behind a secured door anyway. And so in that discussion, we also said, well, you know, if we're looking at all of this, let's look at it. I mean, and it really didn't even start off this way. It actually started off as a complete discussion around how the second floor could be reconfigured. So, Calvin, do you have the second, second. layout of this, oh, yeah, uh, this, yeah, this floor plan? Yeah. So, you know, it's funny because people said, well, just take away the town administrator's office. It's ironic enough that we're taking away the town administrator's office as part of this plan, too. We're actually creating a smaller area um, for the town administrator's office because, I mean, he still does have personnel discussions and stuff like that. It's really hard to take away his office and expect him to have personnel discussions with employees in front of employees. I mean, so, you know, there's plenty of reasons why you might want that area to be contained, but um, we're looking at creating a much smaller area for the town administrator. And this plan shows a lot of, you know, cubicles and stuff, but, I mean, honestly, this is more of a you know, we were thinking like, hey, if we're going to do this, let's do this one time. We've, we're going to probably spend a little bit of money on this. We, um, we're going to do a lot of the work in-house. I mean, you know, we have body, there are members of the elected body and the staff are planning on, along with public works, over Christmas break. You know, I'm on vacation, but I'll be in town hall tearing walls down, putting up new walls. So there was a discussion around, you know, eventually when development starts to occur in the town, that we're going to need places for code enforcement officers, for building inspectors, because, you know, I think it's probably a little unrealistic, unrealistic to expect that the town administrator under, you know, his current workload particularly can do building inspections on 10 or 20 houses a year. Um, I'm sorry. So I think that would be probably an unrealistic expectation. We're also discussing how can we, um, because the police department, frankly, is bur you know, bursting, it seems, on the first floor, how can we reconfigure the uh, administrative area to move all of administration onto the second floor because right now we do have one um, administrative employee on the first floor at the front desk and how can we basically uh, allow long term um, as the police department becomes you know more enamored or more uh, encumbered with regulations and such to potentially have a place where it, basically where the current uh, current clerk sits would become the police clerk. That person would handle uh, additionally things like water bills and stuff as they come in. And we would have all of administrative staff on the second floor where there's greater um, ability to supervise. 
uh, that staff. Uh, and also make sure that work's being, you know, handled and everything efficiently. So it was part of a much broader plan. This wasn't like just some, you know, we're going to, yeah, and as it was portrayed, take away the mayor's office. Um, we've, I mean, I've taken a significant beating over the last week or so um, for really a one-sided argument that I, I was actually very disappointed. I wasn't shocked because, I mean, we were frankly told that this argument was going to be held on Facebook probably at least a few days in advance, um, you know, that somebody would go to their Facebook followers and get them riled up against us. It was pretty, I mean, I don't know if that's the exact words, but the insinuation. And as a result, um, you know, we've been very distracted over the last week, unfortunately, still trying to move business of the town forward, um, uh, as we'll, you know, have some reports on later on. But, um, you know, I, I'm very disappointed in the way this was portrayed, and, and I'm, you know, uh, I wanted to, you know, make sure we set the record straight on how some of this went down. Mr. Warnick, uh, Commissioner Warnick, just want everybody to know that <clears throat> this is not just his point of view. It is shared by all four members of this group because we did have a two-page document on November 24th when we first talked about this and brought it to town hall, and we voted on it in a public meeting on December 9th. Now, Mayor Marion, if you'd like to have more discussion tonight, I'll move that we rescind the vote taken on December 9th. I make a motion. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So, since the discussion has been rescinded, um, <clears throat> frankly, I would say that when I came into this meeting, my point of view was the decision's been made. Um, this decision was made, um, and yes, it was brought up at the last town meeting, um, and uh, I did think, not entirely sure what the rush was for why the decision needed to be made while I was on vacation. Um, yes, I do understand the town business moves forward, um, and uh, I do not believe that the decision did have to be made that night. You can clearly see when uh, the um, meeting was held on November that I was stunned by the decision to move this. And the reason why I was stunned at that time was if Commissioner Scully was here, she would tell you that. Can you go back to the plans for me, please? Thank you. Right here, this plan was in effect when Commissioner Scully was in office. This plan right here still kept an office space here um, and then we would have had the conference room. And this was talked about for a long period of time. Um, and we frankly had, um, I don't think Commissioner Warnick or Commissioner Authorreath would have anything against me saying that we did have an elected body member at that time who was against moving a wall or any decision with that being held. Um, this elected official just did not want it to change. Uh, my other thing would be uh, when I came into office, um, I did ask for an office. Um, and it was not a shared space. I physically did remove um, and move boxes for the town administrator himself when he moved into his new office. Uh, one of the reasons I felt like I needed an office was to meet with the public, to have an open door, um, to do uh, things like community projects, um, discussions of town events from our spectacular to you know different things that we were planning, um, and to have a space where I could keep my things and, and keep order. Um, as far as doing different initiatives like Mayor for a Day, that's where I hosted, you would see last year that I hosted um, the girls there, um, and uh, they basically did Mayor for the Day activities. Um, at no time was I aware that it was a shared space, uh, because you can see that I had personalized it, Commissioner Warnick had said. Um, maybe um, this was just a, a misstep on my part, <coughs> um, but I did not believe it was a shared space at that time. Um, I do think it's important to have a Mayor's office. However, um, record retention is also important. That's why I said that this decision has been made and is done. Uh, my disappointment uh, with the board itself was the fact that I believe the meeting, this decision could have waited until I came back from vacation. Um, if we have a rush, if the, me if the basement itself is flooded, I would totally understand that. Um, it's not. Uh, and uh, I did get a lot of feedback from people that said, you know, frankly, I do believe the mayor needs a space. This is why, whatever it may be. Um, did I say when I came back from the office, um, I was told um, I did receive a letter um, saying move out in three days once I got back from vacation because we're going to start construction. Um, 
to me, this meant the decision's done, move on. So um, I was never given an option to speak here at a town meeting. I'm happy these gentlemen have decided to let me um, speak tonight uh, and say why I believe a mayor needs an office. Um, do I think record retention and storage is important? Yes. Uh, one of the things I would have brought up under town records uh, and proper storage for 2015-07 was to the town administrator asking him if we've ever had an option to have a company come in and organize the current storage we have before we moved into a new space. Have we ever talked about having a company come in? I know we've attempted to do these things um, in-house. Unfortunately, they haven't um, been finished or they, the town staff have given it their best try to get things organized. Um, but in my point of view, what I would have liked to have seen was let's get our things in order. Let's find this letter of credit that these gentlemen are talking about, organize that space, and then decide, hey, do we need extra space or extra storage? Um, that is just my personal opinion. Um, I, did rem I, did, I will say that I did send a letter to the board um, saying that all my things had been cleaned out of the office, and even though I disagreed with their decision, um, I do, um, I will say, that uh, I respect it and I've, I'm ready to move on. And they've never heard anything since those comments. And frankly, the reason that those comments were made um, was you can make an argument that the November um, meeting that we held, which was posted on YouTube, which is a form of social media, um, you can see where the, the town administrator's comments were about this office. Um, Facebook is just another form of social media. I posted on social media my viewpoints, not to get people riled up, but because I did not get a chance to say my opinion at a public meeting. If I'd been given that chance before the decision was held and I was asked to move out, I wouldn't have made the comments. Um, do I believe social media is just another form? Um, do I believe that the people saw it as my opinion? Yes, because it wasn't under a town site, it was under my personal opinion. There are always two sides to every story, um, and that's why I commend some of the people here in the audience to get both sides of the story. Um, my issue is, is, is frank, which is I'm not sure what the rush was to get the decision done that night. These innuendos about um, them canceling a meeting for some sinister reason did not come from me because they were definitely in negotiations, and I commend them for um, settling this legal and sewer issue that we've had for many years. Um, they, those innu innuendos did not come from me at that time. Um, I will also say um, that I'm not disappointed in my comments because I do believe that they came from my viewpoint. Um, and there are always two sides to every story. Um, and this is just mine. Um, when it comes down to it, uh, I wish I would have been able to make these comments before the decision was made to ask me to move out in three days. Um, but they weren't. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm ready to move on with business. I'm ready to call for the vote where I'm sure you gentlemen will vote to keep it as storage, which is completely fine with me. Um, I've already moved my things out, but I am happy that you let me, you gave me this space to be able to speak about it. So, Commissioner Authenry? Just to clarify um, a couple of things. The, the rush to move was not a rush. It was a, one of the fortunate things of this mild winter that we're not salting, we're not plowing snow, we're not shoveling snow. We have some time right now to save ourselves a lot of money in-house taking care of this construction job, which wasn't that long ago the chief had to move out of his office, and the administrator had to move out of his office, and we didn't have this backlash that we've currently had and all these distractions. And they were in there, I remember many a time coming in and seeing the chief in there painting, Calvin in his construction uh, clothes, and this was a timing issue. Not that it was a rush, it was just perfect timing to go ahead and move forward with this. And in your post, um, you claim the town is notorious for having many records disorganized. For three years in office, you haven't done anything about it, and we want to do something about it now. And we don't deserve this one-sided conversation that many of us were blocked from, which paints the town in a negative light that we took away your personal space when none of the other four of us have a personal space. We share the area down there and it's transparent to the residents who want to come in and talk. This is the community's building, not any particular commissioner or mayor who may be elected at the time. We just 
installed five members of an arts alliance who need a place to meet. We have homeowners associations meeting in this building. We have the historic committee that meets in this building. We're actually outgrowing a building that we still owe a lot of money on. And once again, we're gonna reconfigure it to meet our growing needs. It's almost like buying clothes for a growing child. They outgrow them and you can't stop it. But to make it look like we did this behind your back while you were on vacation, that's why there's five members here. Commissioner Lashier was not able to be here that night because he was parked on 95 because of an accident. Should we have stopped because he couldn't be here? Should you stop because I'm on vacation? Should you stop because I'm sick? The other two gentlemen to your left? No, that's why we have enough members and if we don't have a quorum, which has always been the fact, then we don't move forward. But we're here two days before Christmas when normally we're not because there's business that needs to be done. You were aware of it. You chose to not come to other meetings where we discussed this. You weren't kept out of it. You made that decision. So, But were these meetings brought up as we're having these discussions or did they come up informally? This happened when we were knocking meetings? each other's coffee over and bumping into each other in that little conference room, not being able to use the screen because half the time it was always disconnected we need to reconfigure that area for all the groups that need to meet down there. I'm not, I'm not, uh, the other, I'm, it's my no, turn. go ahead, sorry. The other page here shows a lot of new workspaces and new areas to be meeting with people. And I've gone through the minutes all the way back to September in your reports. And I see no meet, no reports where you needed your office to meet with anybody. It was traveling to fall MML. It was meeting at the new Calvert Park. It was visiting the schools. So I don't know what you needed to do from your home office, as, as you reported in this. Uh, we all meet here to be transparent. We don't hide it anywhere. So uh, you had your opportunity. Commissioner Lashier is here tonight. So I make a motion that we continue to move forward with reconfiguring the conference room area uh, as we originally agreed to, in-house work, and then we will do what we need with the contractors that are licensed in electrical or any plumbing that may need to be done at that time, as we originally discussed December 9th. That's my motion. Any second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. I did have two things for discussion before we discussion move forward. Discussion too. Um, and the two things I will say is uh, the innuendos that the meetings were held to discuss, they weren't held to discuss this. They came up informally. These weren't meetings that were advertised as being held to speak about the office and new storage space. We, we spoke about it on November 24th and again on December 9th. Correct. We also uh, spoke about November 22nd. Exactly. I was here. December the 9th, I was not. Um, we, we don't use the fact that we go on vacation to chastise other members of this board for doing something when we're not available. Commissioner Shear was stuck in traffic most of the night. And his comments were sent to the town administrator when he you look not, at the town meeting. He did meetings. not chastise us nice. for moving forward when he was not here. And, um, and I will say that this was not Commissioner Lashier's uh, space at that time. My things were in that space, and to tell me to move out in three days was disingenuous. Um, I didn't think it was right to tell me to move out in three well, that's days. that's your opinion. We that need to opinion. move forward yes, with we do. this area that belongs to the community. Not Can I get a motion to uh, move forward, I'm, please? I'd also say one other thing was there was a comment made that during a previous elected uh, body discussion that, you know, we were talked about all of this except for turning that into storage. That's actually not entirely true because the storage was over here and initially we weren't talking about that. But what we realized was in the reconfiguration that we had previously talked about, there was an Achilles heel in it, which is that we have plumbing in the way, which meant we couldn't move any walls there. So the room was still very inefficiently shaped as an L-shaped room that wouldn't accommodate a larger group of people realistically at the table. I mean, it was actually probably a little worse the way we were looking at reconfiguring it after we really sat okay, down so and analyzed it. question regarding that. This door, is this the existing door that goes into the records room that's there now? No. 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 Well, it's the existing the, door that goes into the hall. Okay. Yeah. And then where's the door that's, the door that is currently there for the... That's all gone. So it was here. All the, that's it all. That's a, yes. That's a, the but current wait. records room would be over to about here. 
But what you're saying is <clears> that we had a discussion about keeping the storage room here. And we we actually, and, and honestly, this storage room, this, this is actually an old diagram. I think we may have even, yeah. uh, there's some discussion about eliminating that at this point and using that for an area where, because one of the other things we always run into is tables that are set up, you're always, you know, around the edges of the room always become an issue. So we were talking about setting that up where the tables could be set up in there for refreshments and things. You know, when you're having a 13 hour meeting, you get a little hungry every now and then. So the, um, the other thing we were looking at to more efficiently utilize this is to take this door back out. So to be fair, this plan, we, since then we've discussed removing this door because you'd have a key fob over here in front of the elevator Storage. and you really don't need this. It actually just becomes a place where if you're having an executive session in there, a uh, conversation could potentially leave the, the room. You know, if you're in the middle of negotiations on things, you don't want information like, you know, my last question is the doors are fobbed and we're saying that these not are into the meeting room not it into will not the it will okay, not be good. fobbed okay because that was my if, question a couple things one and we we were able to do this because one of the concerns is is in this building we're at capacity on key fobs so we were looking at a significant investment if we had to change the number of key fobs increase them so to avoid that we were very thoughtful in the configuration of key fobs and said you know like we can eliminate a key fob there. That one's already fobbed. That door eliminating that key fob allows us to move it over so that we can fob the door into the administrative area, which will be by the bathroom. And that would allow for during the day, one of the concerns that we've had is security concerns. And I'm not talking active shooter concerns. I'm talking that we historically, due to just the nature of the job of the town manager, there's a lot of times during the day that there's doors propped open. And I always come upstairs and think, you know, look to my left, the file room that's open, and think to myself, like, you could easily walk into that file room and walk out with files or whatever. So I've had some concerns about the way that things are left open, but just the nature of the layout on the second floor, it's really hard not to. Um, you have to go through public areas to get from a workspace into the file room. So another benefit of this configuration is they can leave, if they need to during the day even, leave that door propped open into the file room as they're going back and forth handling and mind you all the zoning permit applications building permit applications all that are stored in these areas so all those files you know as people need to get back and forth between the administrative area and the file room you can leave the doors open because you're still behind a fob door without having a security risk public wouldn't be able to just walk in at night you close the two fob doors and if you want you can open this up as a public space so you could have a town meeting on the third floor and you could have a homeowner association meeting on the second floor if that needed to happen it would become an additional community room within the town because you know we don't have executive sessions like every day but when we do have you know we don't have you know meetings every night but when we do have meetings we need the space and when we're not using the space it would be available for anybody to utilize whether it be an elected official that wants to meet with the public or somebody in the member of the community or whether it wanted to be a homeowners association that you needed a place to, to meet because they don't want to meet in somebody's living room, whatever the need may be, you could leave the door open to there. The bathroom would be available to them. So you could actually allow community organizations into that room without having the whole second floor be unsecured, like it would be today, more or less. The only other thing that I would add is that um, Commissioner Rothenreith brought up, um, and you're you can respond to this if you want since the discussions here uh, you brought up about the use of the office um, I did had a meeting scheduled for that Wednesday when I was told to move out in those three days um, I do wish that the decision would have been made to inform me to be able to cancel the meetings that I had you'd said in and I don't I wouldn't say I bring it up in in town meetings sometimes when I hold private meetings with uh, delegates or county executive or with I, I met with a lady from relay for life i think i did mention that at the last um, november meeting when i meet with these community organizations sometimes i don't bring it up until um, the event comes um, and i have met with a few people that want to do charity runs and different things that are coming in the new year but they've asked me to keep them quiet until they get more information um, and the planning from spooktacular was in that room um, i'm not saying that i bring it up all the time but that's that's just uh, my opinion. Well, I have a couple questions. And I, I will I will say um, that the board graciously said that I can use the conference room at any time that I need to to do any of these things. Um, go ahead. 
No, I was going to say, in addition, why wouldn't you be able to just use the conference room anytime? Just, you know, I mean, you probably even have some priority over scheduling, but also the, uh, to that, um, the second point, I mean, we're honestly reasonable people. If you had dropped an email to us and said, hey, can we push this back a little bit? I got a couple meetings scheduled this week. I don't think anybody would have objected to that. I mean, we would have re, I mean, I would have even fought for it. But, you know, going out, I mean, just the way it was handled was just very disappointing. And I would say that, you know, um, I saw it as uh, the meeting itself, the um, decision was done when I got that email asking me to clear out and move out in the three days. And that was it. No more discussion about it. Um, I will say that I did bring up to at least two of the gentlemen um, sitting here tonight um, that I did have strong feelings about this. And I did say this is something that I was going to fight for because I did believe it was something that um, is important to our community and, and for the office of the mayor to have a space to meet with the community. Um, I understand that the Board of Commissioners also um, believes that they may, they may have a space as well or they believe they may have a space. Um, but sometimes when it comes down to the community, some people want to meet with the mayor. They see that as the quote unquote chief executive officer of the town. Um, and I will also add um, that in no way uh, was the, the post itself, uh, as soon as comments started to get out of hand on the post, the post was removed immediately. And if I were using it to rile up people or to get them to come out, I certainly would have invited them to come out tonight, which I did not. Uh, the post was informative and it was because I wasn't allowed to speak before the decision was made. Um, graciously, the gentleman here decided to resend it and let me speak tonight. Um, and I will say, um, as soon as any comments get out of hand, I even commented under one of them that I fully support this board. And, and even though we have um, issues that we may disagree about, for the most part, um, I do agree with the way that they're running their departments and the way that they're moving this town forward. You're not gonna hear from me anything negative about any of these gentlemen because I've, I've served with them. I don't have any issues with them. Uh, this is a one decision thing that I disagreed with um, and they disagree at the way that I handled it. Um, and the decision is going to be finished after this and we are gonna move on with town business. So uh, can I get a motion to move forward? I think there's already a motion and a second on the floor. Mm -hmm. Can I get a motion to approve? I think it's a vote and. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes, thank you. Business meeting items, looks like we have none. Citizens input, Chief. Thank you. Mr. Callahan, you're the first. I forgot how all this works, so Christopher Callahan, 20 Mount Street. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't see a timer or anything, so I think I'm good. <laughs> um, first off, I haven't been here, so Brian, Joe, congratulations. Thank you. I uh, look forward to uh, you serving our community. Secondly, I'm going to go ahead and say that I think something else should be done with the mayor's office. I don't care if it's Travis sitting there or if it was Bob sitting there. There should be a mayor's office in this building. <clears throat> there should be a mayor's office in every town's building for them to conduct what they need to conduct, who they're meeting with, who you're meeting with. I don't think it should necessarily mean that it is strictly his office. I'm sure you could have a meeting in that office as well. And you could have water and sewer meetings in that office as well. I'm curious as to what's going to happen to the basement when all the files come out of it. Oh. I mean, actually, we do have, <laughs> and if you have your, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've been in the basement. Yeah, I with you. I've never been in the basement. Really? Really? Okay. That's good. It's, never been in it's actually, <laughs> it's even worse now than it was when I got elected. I mean, it, you can't hardly walk from one place to the other because, you know, I mean, we have a lot of police equipment down there. We, you know, frankly have a lot of historic commission stuff is, you know, you know, and I'm not, again, it's, I'm not faulting any movies of these in the park groups. stuff. Yeah, movies in the park equipment is like just literally in the middle of the floor. I mean, it was under the heater, but that became a problem. So it's just 
right in the middle of the room. There's no place else to really put it. So there's a couple of things. One, the chief's evidence room is bursting at the seams. I mean, he actually can't walk through it anymore. The floor is piled up with boxes. So we're hoping to reconfigure some of that space to be a larger evidence room. Um, additionally, we're hoping to allow the, you know, possibly move the historic commission or something into that smaller, their stuff in the back corner into that smaller room because they would be better than, you know, their stuff's behind lock and key. They can't get to it right now. If they need it, somebody has to come up here during the day and get it. We could possibly give them an area where they would be able to get to it without the requirements. They have a key fob to the building. They have access. I mean, they could have access to their stuff without having to, having to get somebody from the town administration to take them down and unlock the door into the current area where a lot of the files are. Um, you know, it would be fairly simple to put up some steel studs down there, hang some sheetrock, add a couple doors in, put locks on them, create an evidence room, create an area where some of the other stuff can be stored and move the historic commission stuff out of that area and into possibly the current evidence room since the chief would have a larger evidence room at that point. So, you know, we are, I mean, this is the second floor plan. There's other ideas that we're looking at across the board. I mean, we're looking at how can we in this building where we're, I mean, look, frankly, you were saddled with this. All of us have been saddled with this. We still have close to, and I don't know the exact number, but we're going to say like a $900,000 million note or something like that on this building. I think it's around 900000 give or take. Okay? I didn't negotiate that note. I didn't even live in this town when that note was negotiated, frankly. Right? I didn't build this building. So we're stuck with the poor layout of the elevator in the middle of it. It is what it is. Right? The town paid a lot of money for this building. Actually, it's staggering. Like when I hear about it, it's, I, I think in 2002 it would have had to have been a staggering amount of money because I think today it would be a staggering amount of money that they paid for this building and they still, you know, not they, we, the town, we all, the town, still owe a lot of money on this building, right? So we're trying to figure out how can we deal with the challenges that we have in this space, which have been something plaguing the town for a long time now. You know, how can we handle ever-increasing evidence room how can we handle all these different things? I mean, you know, the chief can't get rid of the evidence until he can get rid of the evidence. So if there's more evidence coming in and not a lot of it's being cleared out for whatever reason. I understand that, and that's going to continue throughout time. That's just a matter of fact, whether it's the chief's evidence yeah. or the papers in front of you all. Yep. Whatever it is, that's going to continue. Right. So there's going to be continued growth of storage problems. Yes. So it makes this it is the building we're limited to, to. Yeah, but because that, no one's going to build us a new building. Right. So it makes it harder for us to have luxuries of offices that are infrequently used when we're outgrowing the current space we have. It can, can unfortunately. I, let me let me just say one thing. And it's, <laughs> I'm, we're not timing him. Yeah, you're good. It's Christmas um, present. The, the the one thing that I would say is that um, you know when you look at this where this conference table is going to be. Um, in my job, I have to meet with people all the time. I don't meet in my office at my desk. I meet in the conference room. This is by... Are you a mayor? No, I'm not. Okay. But we're going to be elected officials sitting at this table, too. Right. Um, That's why we have this room. I, I understand. It's and, not but what I'm well, saying... The problem with this room is it's a public room. But, like, well, why is well, it also a public we're, room? We're getting called up about a it, desk. I mean, that's a, the biggest thing. It's a public thing. room because there's an elevator that comes from the first floor up to Directly here. Directly into and it. And steps we can't lock. When we got... That a wall could be built across here. But it still and doesn't keep the public out. Point it's still doing construction. Construction. But it doesn't... Yeah. It doesn't... I, I mean, didn't complain right. about the construction. We're, we're discussing the possibility of walls so, there, honestly. At any rate... <clears throat> The continued storage is going to become a problem, and you're going to hate me on this one. Sorry. Does the Rising Sun Arts Alliance have room in this? They utilize this space currently. They utilize this and, space. And so house. when they ask yeah. for more space because they need to store things, are they going to get space like that? No, and, and frankly, the, I mean, you know, this. Then how come that space hasn't become available? We're, so... You know, I, I honestly the historic committee space and look how much stuff they've moved across the street to Bud McFadden's facility, which if it gets sold, what do we do with that? 
I don't know. What and, are you right. going to do with it? Yeah. Right. And Chris, I, I, Chris we're, we're, we're we understand this. This, I mean, There's it'll probably wind questions. up in the storage in the space in the basement if it <laughs> has to. I mean, honestly, that's probably where it's going to wind up. If that building sells, we're going to have to figure out a place in the basement to squeeze all that stuff in. Look, we understand. I mean, the historic commission has been looking for a space for a while now. Oh, I think for many years. Uh, you you can agree with that. That they've been looking for a place for a museum. We don't have a solution for that today, right? We're trying to work diligently to come up with a solution for that. I mean, one of the discussion points, frankly, we discussed in this whole mix was, and I hate to even go here because this is not going to be a politically popular topic to discuss, but hell, I'll just go in there. We talked about the idea of saying, Historic Commission, you're going to need to find a place, right? We've got valuable real estate up here, in a sense, that we're going to need them to eventually move out of that space. And hey, maybe when we do that, we could put a mayor's office up here. That's, that's always been right. an eventual plan, as my understanding. I, I agree, but I'm not like I wasn't, you know, going to go and bum rush the historic commission out of the space. We'll have to make do for a little while, given the limitations of the building. We're going to have to make do for a little while with a conference room. Unfortunately, I mean. Look. So, so how much space is needed for the files that are presently in the basement? Does anyone have any clue? It probably won't all. I mean, it's going to be tight in that room. So that was a no. You don't know how much space is available, or you need. We have a pretty good idea how much space we need. I mean, there's, it's more space than probably is available. Because we've because been through these files in the basement, so we know exactly what we're keeping and what we're getting rid of. We haven't been through all the files in the basement. Right, so you idea. haven't. So basically what you're telling me is that you have a garage at your house full of stuff. Yeah. But you're going to put another garage over here before I even go through my stuff to see how much I need. I can clean out my garage. I can't throw out town records. Yeah, to, to, right. make, to make that judgment, we don't need to touch every single piece of paper. We're it sounds about, like every talking, single piece of paper has documents. to be touched to get it organized. We're Correct. We're talking about yeah. documents, Chris, that every resident of the town of Rising Sun has a personal stake in. Absolutely. If you came in looking for something, and we said, let's go down and dig through the basement, and you found it, you know, in an unsecure not a good climate controlled area and it was a very important original document you needed uh, I don't think you'd be happy and, and we know we can't sit here and answer every question you've answered tonight we also have to do this in the most cost-efficient way because there's more and more meetings being done here you've been away from this for years and Two. a lot has happened a lot has happened here a lot of growing pains and it's been good growing pains it's good that I we agree have arts alliances and stuff and as we reconfigure the second side of the second floor, there's still a place for the mayor to meet. By all means, all he's got to do is ask Calvin, can I use your office? And I'm sure the answer is yes every time because he still has that area. So it's not like there's no longer any place in town hall for the mayor to have a private meeting with anybody he needs to. All he's got to do is ask, and it's available. It may not look like the personal space that he had downstairs, but it's a, it's a private space it, in it, town hall where he can meet. I don't necessarily know that it needs to be a personal space, but it needs to be an office. So we have, we have I, the area. I, I've said what I need to say on that subject. We, the next one is this whole social media thing. And what I'm worried about is that there'll be one person, my understanding as from reading it, one person who will be in charge of the social media output. And that person can hire managers to be in charge of that social media output. Am I correct on that? Uh, no. So basically, it was decided that the best situation would be for official town outlets, such as if I have a page that's uh, Commissioner Brian Lashier, where there's a town of Rising Sun page, that the administrators of it be actually employees versus elected officials because employees can actually be controlled and elected officials can't. And that's a very important distinction because if Calvin posts something that we don't like, we can terminate him. If an elected official posts confidential information about something that's going on with a lawsuit or whatnot, you don't have any recourse and the cat's out of the bag. Um, so as my page for Commissioner Brian Lashier, I can basically post almost anything I want and get out information. Now, if I post something on there that shouldn't be on there, the town has recourse to remove that post. 
That's the difference. So everybody will be posting themselves, but it gives the town recourse to remove possibly conf confidential information or any kind of inflammatory information off of the page versus if you have just say an elected official or somebody that runs rogue, if you will, you can't take it off and you can't do anything. And look, we've been having discussion on this policy. We're not done with this policy yet, frankly, because we've, we've still been having discussion on it. Um, there's some pieces of it that, you know, we've had discussion as late as a few days ago that, you know, I may not necessarily, I mean, we haven't come to a consensus on this one by any means. But one of the things, I mean, look, I'll, you know, one of the things that actually became a catalyst for this, I, I hate to, God, I hate to bring this up, but, but will. I will, because it's relevant is we had a commissioner that joined the board and wanted to post that trash would be delayed by a day, right? And that seems like a reasonable thing that a commissioner should be able to post. And when he attempted to post it, he found out he couldn't. So he wanted to be added to have the ability to post that. And there was a fear by, you know, one of the elected officials that was the exclusive admin to the page that adding that person would result, or making anybody else an administrator would result in him being removed. Nobody wanted to remove him, it was made very clear, but he continued to insist that, you know, he would be removed if he, w if he added other people. So he also felt the page was being managed very well at current time, so he didn't feel any need for anything to change. Well, you know, I don't disagree with him necessarily. I, mean, I think he's actually done a phenomenal job managing the page. But if other people, other elected officials want to be able to post to the town's page within reason, they should have that ability to do that, right? I mean, you know, so we were going to pretty much come in here and vote, have to vote to add him. Now, when all of this happened, um, you know, to the mayor's credit, he uh, relented. about his decision and decided that it was in the best interest of the town uh, to turn the page over to the town administrator, and that was the end of the discussion. So now the town administrator is the admin and all the elected body members are editors that at least wanted to be editors. Which is the way it should be. Correct. Oh, we agree. Which is the way it should be. Yeah. Well, now I'm going to go ahead and blame you for all of this. <laughs> because prior to you becoming mayor, there was no one in this town that had a Facebook page that had a suffix of commissioner or mayor. Nor should there be. Yeah. You are your own person. Well, when he posted what he posted, he posted it privately. That was his page. Nothing should have come of it. There's, I'm sorry, I'm still talking. Okay. There should not be a commissioner or a mayor as a suffix on any of the town's social media outlets. Problem solved. There's only one social media outlet for this town, and it should be the town of Rising Sun. Chris, can I ask a question? Do you, am I hearing you saying that on the town's page, commissioners. That's on the town's page. Under the name of Commissioner Rothenreath should be able to post information such as a different day of trash pickup or. Certainly. We're going to be doing work on Ryan Drive. On the town's I, page, I've yes. I've never created a Commissioner Rothenreath page. No, you haven't. My personal page is out there to talk to people about and I've sometimes shared information, but that's it. Correct. And some pictures of my cats. Correct. But. If we, if we, <laughs> you're welcome. If 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 we want to post uh, official town business through our departments onto the town page, I think what I'm hearing from you is that's good. Absolutely. Okay. And then when a lot of this, all this, these comments and everything came out, we said we need to table this. Commissioner Lashier was up here last Saturday, mm -hmm. and he said, "Call me, email me." Facebook me or come see me in person. We also, uh, he just said he'd be up here next Saturday because we I said, hey. Following, following Saturday. January 2nd. January 2nd. Saturday? No. Okay. <laughs> but we see, we see. <laughs> yes, because you wanted to hear we, what people wanted right. to say. We want to hear more of it. We're not bum rushing or in a rush to do it because we see, hey, there, there's, there's more moving parts to this and we want to get it right. And I appreciate what you said because that, that kind of leads down the road that we originally started that uh, you should be able to post stuff. But if you're going on there and there and I'm going to post an email he sent me about a, a, a private meeting we had, that's, not, that's a no-no. Mm -hmm. And somebody needs to be able to take that down 
because that can lead to what we just saw earlier and the lawyers will say well here's your town official on Facebook see I wasn't gonna so. bother with that one but Calvin brought it up earlier and you just brought it up too what we saw earlier has nothing to do with this ordinance whatsoever that was in a public town meeting that was right. taped period yes. so don't it can keep be used. saying that it has something a, a, to do a facebook with it. A, a, an official yeah. rise of sun, a yeah. town rising sun official facebook page this is just one can be used yeah right it, it well, can be used if you say the wrong it. thing it will be used right. and and we should protect the town and the residents because first and foremost we're residents agreed because there's not hired too guns from outside of town everything we do at this table affects us personally because I know that as well. <laughs> residents first and foremost, like you, and yep. you've sat on these boards before, and you know how up here you even have to be more careful what you say than you do on the other side of this table. Yeah, it's great being over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you again, Chris. Thank you've been you. away too long. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak this evening? No. I also read through the ordinance, 10 pages, I think it was, that's been tabled for now. First, I'd like to say, if it ends up being brought before the board to pass, I hope somebody makes corrections to all the errors that are in it. Oh, absolutely. Um, but secondly, I believe that I read also that an individual, an elected member's personal private page could also be controlled. No, it was, it was their personal page, not their private page, their personal page that they basically are putting out there as an elected official. And there's been some discussion about that because that's actually one of the concerns that I've had is that, you know, I understand the use of the media and I, you know, and I've had, I've, you know, like over the last year and a half, I understand how it's an effective tool. So I've had some concerns over some of that language, frankly. Um, to Mr. Callahan's point about, you know, should there be a page that says commissioner, one of the reasons that, you know, we did that was, I mean, honestly, was there was some discussions, there's been discussions at MML and such over um, be careful that you separate your personal, private social media from your public social media because the public social media becomes more public. I mean, it, it, it has, there's legal ramifications to the public social media. Well, I should have so, made note of what page number it was on because I believe it does say I, their private page, their personal page. But you've I, tabled it, so. Um, D, what, what you're referencing is that personal pages cannot take on the appearance of town pages, is the point. Is that if you, you can't go on, and I'm going to put it to you this way. You can't circumvent the protections that the board is trying to get so that somebody says something inappropriate by going on your page and just simply because you're on your page talking about town business that way. It's no different than, and I'll use uh, Dave as an example, Bank of, Amer Bank of America. Dave couldn't go on his personal page and start talking about the business dealings of Bank of America. Mr. Goble, with, with your employment, I doubt you could create your own whatever XYZ company Facebook page or start talking about all those things without your employer coming to you and saying, hey, you know, you really shouldn't be doing that. That's what it's talking yeah. about is personal pages are to remain personal pages, not talk about how. Right. And to that note, I, I mean, as pointed out at Bank of America, and I really shouldn't be talking about it, but we have a social media policy that says we will not go on our personal page, and they've relaxed it some. It used to say you will not talk about anything bank related. And um, they've actually relaxed it a little bit that we're now allowed to say that we work for the bank and you know we can effectively post positive stuff, but we're not allowed to post negative stuff about the bank. I mean, that's a pretty standard. You know, Large employers do that a lot. That's very common, um, as I'm sure many people in this room are aware of. Uh, and to that point, so yeah, there is, you know, you can't just go on your personal page and, you know, as an elect, I mean, you're still, you know, we, I, I started as legacy MBNA at the bank. And even back in the MBNA days, there was this philosophy that you are a representative of the bank 24 hours a day. 
that as a officer of the bank, I represented the bank. And we even had like these strange policies that were kind of like unwritten rules about, hey, if you're going to be out like in public drinking, if you're at this level, you probably don't want to drink more than like this much because people recognize you as a SVP at the bank. But you know, if you're an officer or AVP, it might not be as restrictive. But if you're like an SEVP where, hey, there could be like an employee at the bank that you don't know sitting at the table next to you and you get drunk and out of hand, that's going to reflect poorly upon the management of the bank. So we had things like that even. The point of that is, is on your personal page, you know, while, um, you know, you can certainly, whatever, I, I, it's the, I guess the point is, is what you wouldn't say as a commissioner in public, you probably shouldn't put in writing on your personal page. Well, there would be there no social media too. if that was the case, right? I don't post things on my personal Facebook page that would, you know, compromise my employer or, you know, the town or anything. I mean, I, as Commissioner Rothreath, cats and children, more or less. But, you know, the point, and look, I get involved in other political things, but I specifically avoid, um, I, I definitely, I mean, I very much keep my town commissioner Facebook page separate from my personal Dave Warnick page. Matter of fact, I even go so far as, and this was one of my concerns about creating or about, you know, going from a account to a page, actually, because we're actually saying page, we really mean account. Um, going back to a page that can be, you know, it's just a page is when I'm dealing with people in the town, unless I personally know them, they're not friends on my personal page. They're only friends on my town commissioner page. Um, you know, if I'm dealing and people that I'm friends with and I will not, I mean, like if I get somebody that friends me on my personal page that I don't have any friendship or like any relationship with outside of town business, I won't accept that friend request. You know, I might friend them from my commissioner page so that, you know, we can still have that communication channel open without creating this problem. And it's, it, look, it's a tough thing to threat. I mean, as a public official, you're, there's a lot of things you deal with that are challenging and you just deal with them. They are what they are, right? I mean, unfortunately, we're in a very litigious society anymore, so we deal with what we deal with. But, um, you know, I won't even, like, I also get a lot of, I get some requests on my commissioner page that I won't accept because, well, actually, that's, that's really not so true. I pretty much accept almost anybody on there that's in the country <laughs> um, because it is a public profile. I mean, really, and I, po I actually post everything on there publicly. I don't post things that are for friends only. Okay. So. so, also, I think since this whole office situation started, I think it's very pathetic. I've been watching all of you all night. None of you will look at the mayor, and it's sad. You can't see me, but I'm sitting here looking at him all night. I've been watching you all night. Well, I'm glad. I hope my hair looks good. Betty Marion, I grew up in this town. I'm also the mayor's mother. And I would respectfully ask that none of you interrupt me until I'm finished. Okay. I've been a citizen of this town. I actually voted for each and every one of you. And I am ashamed of your behavior. I really am. I live in the same, I, please don't take my picture, please. I do not, I understand that, but I do not want it in the paper. I live in the same development as three of you. And if the weather was cold enough, there would be icicles all over my home, my yard. You know, I feel like you have acted inappropriately. You hold secret meetings and don't inv invite the mayor to them to talk about him. What kind of adult behavior is that? If you have a problem, you bring the person there and you discuss it as adults. This is absolutely ridiculous that it has come to this. Okay, he was upset that his office was being taken away. To my understanding, there has been nothing going on downstairs construction-wise, and that somebody could have had the decency to say, hey, you really don't have to get out in three days, because he was working when we came back from vacation. He went back to work, and you could have said, you, you can have four or five more days. Why not? What was the big deal? None. You say he didn't say anything? 
you didn't say anything either. And all these meetings that you're having where you're not including him, how is that doing town business? It isn't. It's making divisiveness again. And I, as a town resident, am very upset that there's construction going to go on in my town building that I was not aware of. Mr. Vonnenberger, can you please go back to the plans? I specifically would like to see the side of the second floor where your office is. And after tonight, if any of you continue to do the behavior that you're doing, I mean, there, there's, there's commissioners in this room who actually asked for Travis to, to go out and campaign for them, and then they're treating him like garbage. That is not right. Okay. So he had a reaction. None of you have ever had a reaction? I beg to differ. And as far as the comments she made about your mouths tonight, oh my God, if your face froze like that, you would be all your life gone. That is absolutely ridiculous. This is the, the side of second floor. That is where the town administrator's office is. This side is much bigger than the other side because of this stairwell, because of the kitchen, because of the bathroom. I want to know why those offices can't go to the other side and the records be placed in the bigger storage. What is the problem with that? Why do we have to do it on the side that it's already in? Was that I'm, a question? I'm done. Yes, you may respond. Now. The, the larger side is more strategic planning over the next five years to plan for hiring people. And I'd also like to know, uh, um, you mentioned secret meetings. I mean, I know over the past year there's been seven out of ten executive sessions that the mayor has been involved with scheduling that he failed to attend. But what secret meetings are you referring to? I was made aware enough by my son, by another town official, that just recently the commissioners all met behind closed doors to discuss Travis. You want to sit there and tell me that's not true? Because I have it from somebody who knows that that is the truth. Every time we've met an executive session, I mean, it's Travis didn't show up. It's not an executive session, but if, you, if you're meeting as a group of commissioners that are elected officials to discuss another elected official, act like grown-ups and have them there. And I will not be treated the way that I've been treated in the development. That is, that is totally ridiculous. The only person that has actually spoken to me is Alan. I pay my taxes. When, when, have, I, when have I seen you and not spoken you to you? You're outside washing your car and I'm waving at you. You realize I have one eye and I was washing my car, so maybe I didn't see you. Any more discussion? Chief. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. Um, I'm going to be brief because the more I talk, the more I cough. So I'm going to try to get through this quickly. Without exposing you all to whatever it is that I have. Um, too late. <laughs> You've been too close already. Uh, during a period of December 8th through the 22nd, we've had 215 incidents. Um, I'd like to note when we have approximately 215 incidents, maybe a third of that are report written incidents. That means somewhere in the police department, we have a paper file. Um, so if we're aver averaging that much in two weeks, the rate of files in the police department is growing rapidly. Um, I don't really want to jump into that conversation that we just passed, but we are expanding. Um, I do have an evidence room that has grown beyond 
its uh, usefulness. Um, the retention period sometimes is nine years, sometimes even longer for some cases that can go to an appeal. Um, and that's with actively destroying stuff as quickly as we possibly can. Um, so that's just a side note um, because I know many people think that the police department's taking over the bottom floor may be a problem. It is a problem because we're in this building. Um, it's just a small space that we're trying to make do with and with the anticipation of growth, um, it's only gonna get worse. So on to the, uh, the next page, Valley View, with the complaint we had there, we've spent seven hours of foot patrol. Um, we've written two warnings and one parking citation. West Main Street at Harrington, um, the complaint of uh, speeding vehicles passing a bus. Uh, we've spent 4.5 hours there monitoring. So far we haven't written anything uh, as far as uh, violations. Um, that shows that we are making somewhat of an impact changing uh, the human behavior. At the last meeting, we spoke about Brian's Grace, where we had a complaint of uh, speeding vehicles and drug activity. So far, we've had two traffic stops. We spent 10 hours of uh, patrolling there, and uh, things appear to be settling down. With the incident with the uh, homeowner using the generator inside of the residence, that at this point in time has stopped. Um, that may be or caused by the weather. I mean, we are, we've had warmer temperatures than what's normal in December. Um, so hopefully it's been fixed. Um, but I, I do think the weather's been the major uh, cause that that hasn't been running. Um, Rising Sun Middle School, if you aren't aware, we are there at dismissal. We are there at arrival. Um, and we also have a DARE program that's having officers in the school, so we have a great impact there. It creates a presence with the uh, students. They develop a uh, uh, rapport with the officers, um, and that seems to have worked well because our response is there for complaints has diminished. We have written seven warnings for traffic violations there. Um, overall, in that two-week time period, we've uh, made one arrest for theft, one for possession of heroin, and uh, arrested two fugitives from other areas. And when I say other areas, that could be somewhere else in the county or um, somewhere else that is extraditable in this country. Um, Traffic-wise, we've written four moving violations, one DWI, um, 32 uh, warnings have been issued, um, three parking citations. The uh, complaint in Valley View about parking along Valley View Drive, there was an event, I believe this past weekend, and we have not had any incidents or any complaints about parking along uh, Valley View Drive that I'm aware of. You're welcome. Um, we'll, we'll continue to monitor that and the uh, parking around that area in a development. Um, as I also mentioned during last meeting, South Queen Street, we had a, uh, a uh, problem with the bus there where a speeding vehicle passed the bus and nearly struck a child getting off the bus. And coincidental, the bus arrives the same time at this location as it does at Harrington Drive. So we have to juggle officers between the two um, to make sure we cover those and help change that behavior of drivers coming in and out of town at both locations. Um, we spent 7.5 hours at that location and wrote eight warnings for, uh, for uh, <laughs> vehicles coming through there. Um, also last weekend, the shot with the cop was held. Um, there was a great article written in the Herald by Lisa. Um, she was given the right to pretty much uh, follow Officer Herbert. And what she did, she learned an interesting story about how, um, yes, I had to uh, borrow your pictures. Oh, thanks. Now you tell me. Now we get on to the other thing about liability, what people put on social media. Here we go. I'll probably get sued for pictures. Um, but... Officer Herbert had an interesting story. 
where he was a recipient of a program similar to Shop with a Cop before it was termed Shop with a Cop um, when he lived in Perry Point. If you haven't read it, take, a time, take your time and read it. It's a very good article, uh, and it shows how policemen are developed when they have certain circumstances as a kid. They grow up to become law enforcement officers. Um, that program helped 73 kids and 38 families, which is huge. Um, each kid got about $300 to spend, and each family was given a, uh, a complete dinner for, uh, for Christmas. Um, Coffee with the Cop was also held. Uh, let, I'll back up real quick. Uh, yeah, that's fine, Calvin. Coffee with the Cop was also held at Martin's. Um, I believe the, the uh, just time of the year with many people being involved in Christmas shopping and holiday shopping um, kept the number down, but I was still impressed with the amount of people that did come out, and most of them came out to thank us, not to discuss any problems in town, um, which I'm not really happy with. I'd like to hear what's going on in town, but you know, being thanked is also a, a pleasurable experience for the law enforcement officers out there. Um, so that went well. I'm looking at having another in March. Um, and uh, hopefully we can continue to expand on that. Um, and lastly, at the last meeting, I showed a video uh, um, about active shooters. It was Run, Fight, Hide. I'm um, sorry, let's get that right. It's Run, Hide, Run, Hide. Run, hide. Yeah, Run, what she said. Run, Hide, Fight. Um, how to respond to an active shooter. And uh, this should have been the prequel to that video um, because this is what happens in a simple setting like this where someone's not happy and there's no safety measures in place. This video is going to take probably four or five minutes. Um, so if you could, Calvin, just click. Mm -hmm. click on that. Yep. Nope. If you go back and go to the bottom of the screen. Go to the bottom of the window, rather. It should. It's not the run, high fight, is it? No. This is an active uh, Panama City school board meeting where a terminated employee's husband came into the meeting and uh, started spray painting on a the wall, then wanted to discuss why his wife had been terminated. Um, after a while, <laughs> actually it was red spray paint, but after a while he took a shot at some of the uh, school board members until the uh, law enforcement officer in an adjacent room heard it and was able to come in and, and combat that. Um, I think what the most amazing thing is about that video, because they showed it when myself, you, and Calvin went to a um, active shooter presentation by Legit, um, I think it was last year, was the most amazing thing about it was when the gentleman started to spray paint on the wall, no one got up. They just watched him. Like, they didn't react at all. Um, and it's that reaction time that's so important because yeah. he just sat there spray painting. It was like no one recognized the threat. Yeah, nobody uh, recognized the. If threat. you want to, Calvin, and you have time, just Google uh, Panama City School Board, and the video should come up. Okay. I can uh, come back to it. And that is pretty much my report, uh, unless there's any questions. <coughs> yes, ma'am. We had an incident the other day when someone home, it was Thanksgiving, we had a dead raccoon outside of our houses down there during the day. We didn't know if it was leaving or not. DNR would not help us, game warden wouldn't help us, but your officer, Herbert, came down, threw it in my trash can, <laughs> but he got it out of the way and the kids were just, they would appreciate Mr. Herbert. That's um, what they told me to tell you. I'm glad he didn't cook it on the side of the road. <laughs> yeah, I see a bunch of them, yeah. Any of them that does not say review. 
It says Florida School Board shooting to watch full video, seven minutes. That's that's probably it, yeah. yeah. Those are the simple things that uh, our officers do on a daily basis that many people don't understand or, or see. What you can hear is the spray paint occurring on the wall. I'm the only one that signed 
Will you let them go? I mean, but you're obviously upset me. So why are they here? Part of what? Sir, I don't know what you were in. Stop taxes, okay? You said we don't need no taxes. No, just plenty of money. Then as soon as you got the school system, then you turned around and said, oh, now we need to have some sales tax again. I said we need to have some sales tax from the very beginning. I, I can't campaigned on that. Oh, yes, I did. You can find, you can look over the material. I said from the beginning, the half cent sales tax is the most equitable way because everybody pays it, not just property owners. You know, see, here's what I don't want to happen. I don't want anybody, listen, just listen to me for a minute. I don't want anybody to get hurt, and I, I've got a feeling that what you want is the cops to come in and kill you because you're you're mad. Because you uh, said you're going to die over that. But why? If this is this isn't worth it. This is a problem. Please don't. Please don't. Please. Real, I don't think. I think it's. He had a cat's mind. That's what he wanted right there, Mike. I was trying to talk to him. I knew. I don't mind. <clears throat> There was a school safety officer that was off in a side office that saw it. Um, it was more or less a security guard that uh, started seeing it and had to wait because of the location of the, the assailant. Um, he was angled, whereas he would have to shoot towards the body that was there. Um, you know, some of the reason I showed that video is we talk about the design of the building and structurally, the design of this meeting room can create some hazards for the board. Um, you have a group of individuals here making decisions that are life-changing for the citizens of their community. And at times, people are not happy. Um, I'm charged with making sure they're safe. I can tell you I will do my best, my damnedest, to make sure that everyone walks out of this room safely. But there are limitations when you have an elevator in the middle of a room. The design of this building is poor, and it needs to be changed. Needs, something needs to be done. And hopefully with the uh, approval of the board, we'll work to uh, um, do something that will not only keep the board safe, but everyone attending a meeting. Um, what you see in that meeting is a little bit different than the way I'm, my police department would respond, the way I would respond. Um, because it will be rapid response. We understand that that gentleman had a mission and his mission, as he stated when he walked in that room, is I'm going to die today. So with that being said, um, please be mindful that your elected body is here making decisions that affect everybody and it's not gonna make people happy but we've got to make sure we put the right measures in place to keep them safe. That's my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Kind of administrator. Um, I, the only thing I want to bring to your attention is I got a phone call from the county today that um, due to changes in the economic market related to recycling, they are seeing a huge increase in the amount of money the county has to pay to have the recycling hauled away and processed. They're looking, the numbers I got today unofficially, officially was they're looking at like a $165,000 increase over the next calendar year, above and beyond what they're paying already. Um, we are the only community that pays our trash and recycling as a separate uh, fee to the county and the reason why we do that 
is it makes the hauler responsible to the volumes that we put in the, tr in the, in the dumpster, as opposed to if we didn't do it that way, the hauler would show up at the landfill with a full, you know, load and could hypothetically charge us for that full load, although maybe only a quarter of it was for the uh, town of Rising Sun. And they could hide it that way. So when we did our trash specs a couple years ago, we took the recommendation of the county landfill and changed our contract to say that we would pay the fee separately. That doesn't put us in a disadvantage with this scenario. It just it enables the county to tell us what they think the proposed cost increase is going to do to us because obviously they have to pass that $165,000 on. They have to do budget cuts, expense cuts, and right now it looks like it's going to cost us about 3000 additional dollars above and beyond what we are paying already. Um, just off the top of my head, a, a, a cost saving measure that you could do would be to decide to go from once a week recycling collection to only twice a month every two weeks. Um, I'll give you my opinion on that. It's you're going to save about $1,500 if you did that and, and I would tend to think that you know it's a pretty good service that we're, we're one of the few communities that actually does once a week recycling collection. So, you know, if you went to only once, uh, or once every uh, two weeks or twice a month, you'd only save roughly $1,500. If you went to <coughs> once a month, you know, you're going to save more money. But right now it appears the cost impact to us is going to be about 3000 additional dollars. So you guys can think about it. Um, the uh, County Administrator, Mr. Um, Al Wine, and uh, the Director of Public Works, Scott Flanagan, said that if the board members wanted to set up a meeting to go in and talk to them in more detail, they'd be happy to um, sit even in. So it's not anything you have to decide upon tonight. I just wanted to let you know and the residents know that there will be an increase in the recycling collection. Town Administrator did have a, go ahead. I just wanted to know uh, how quickly do we need to, um, what's, the, what's the time frame? What, January. What they? they will take effect in January. Okay. And that $3,000 increase, as, as he had, one thing I have to clarify, he was, he was telling me it was $165,000 through the fiscal, uh, which it would make sense, through the fiscal 2015 year, which ends in July. Mm -hmm. So it, it would be $3,000 more for us between now and uh, June 30th of 2016. So we're looking at like 6,000 total for the year? Is that, is that, so we're just talking the 3,000 would be for, for the end of the, this fiscal yes. year? Yes, yes. Okay. You, you can probably draw out of that that next year when we do the budget, we should account for a $6,000 plus increase because we are six months through this fiscal year. Yeah. You talked about sending a representative who is in charge of trash and recyclables underneath? I think that falls under streets and sidewalks. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's if you want to meet with me with. I mean, it could be a well, phone call. It, yeah, because it's a, it's a done deal. We're not going to change it. All we've got to do is Sorry, figure know. out how we're going to um, adjust our schedule and a contract that we already have with a hauler. So it's not something that can be made a decision on. Yeah, the, the one thing I, w I will say this to you, a couple of years ago, maybe about a year or two ago, they were looking to make changes and all the municipalities got together and they were able to curb the amount of the increase, which would basically mean you'd be telling the county to make more cost-cutting measures so that you didn't have to pay as much. So I, I don't want to give the impression that there's nothing you can talk about to them. You could, but it, it's either they're going to give up more or we're going to pay more, I guess, is one way of looking at it. We, one thing I'd like to add, since here we are just a couple of days away from Christmas, the end of the year, so we're just a, a week and a half away from the next budget cycle. And as I know from past experience here, that budget that we adopt uh, in six months, you start working on now. Yeah. And now you've got this that's been thrown into our budget. 
we've still got what we have to do to Ryan Drive in the springtime, which is not done, not going away, and it's going to be very expensive. So I, I'd like to ask Calvin that you get started on that budget as, as soon as possible. Uh, let us know if there's something we can take off your plate because all, I, I'd like to see us adopting that budget by the end of May um, so that if we, anybody would like to, especially with new commissioners, can go to the MML uh, summer conference uh, which is the big one that everybody should get to go to. Last year, three of us were still here at the end of the month, still working on the budget and, and having a couple of meetings. So we, we should all be here. We should all be talking about it. We should all be responsible for it. So please like task you with getting started on that uh, tomorrow. But no, wait till the first week of the you know, but let's, let's get started on that sooner. We know it's, a, it's an elephant you can't eat in one bite. And it's going to take a lot of meetings, uh, a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls, a lot of time in a public meeting to work it out. Because now we've got some big unexpected numbers, especially this one with Ryan Drive that um, we weren't prepared for. Now, the only other thing I have is a reminder of the vacancy on the Board of Appeals. Okay. Um, I'm going to do my report later like I always do. We should move it down on the agenda. Um, Historical Preservation Commission. <clears throat> Rising Sun Arts Alliance. I don't think they're here tonight. No. Okay. Any old business? Any new business? Town Hall office hours. The Town Hall will be closing at noon on Thursday, December the 24th, which is Christmas Eve. Town Hall will also be closing at noon on Thursday, December the 31st. Um, I will say under my mayor comments, my mayor comments are brief. Uh, let me get them. Um, I attended shop with a cop along with uh, Commissioner Shepard, who I'm sure will bring this up in his report. Um, I was uh, totally amazed at the outreach of our law enforcement. Um, Rising Sun was well represented. Um, I think they wanted to recognize Rising Sun, and that's why they asked us all to come up and speak, um, because we were well represented. Commissioner uh, Warnick along with uh, Commissioner Shepard and myself were there. Um, and uh, it was just a great event, and I'm excited for next year. Um, Trooper Cowden, who is a Rising Sun resident, called me out on Facebook to make sure I was there. Um, and I was there. I just totally enjoyed it. It was just a great event. Uh, Mayor for a Day is going to be coming up again. Um, it is something that I enjoy doing at the Rising Sun Elementary Schools. Uh, I've talked with the chief uh, about um, a police escort again for the kids, and I'll let the, the board know in the new year about what I'm planning for this um, year's mayor for the day. I just got the packet actually yesterday uh, from MML, um, and I'm looking forward to doing that in the new year in the spring. Um, I also wanted to say that uh, I plan on um, recognizing the Rising Sun High School State Championship volleyball team. We have the proclamations downstairs. I will certainly let the board know on the date. Uh, we plan on doing it at the high school sometime in the new year, uh, and from what my understanding is, it will have to be unfortunately during school hours. So uh, the board will have to work with that. There are two other things I wanted to bring up really quick, and this was something that Commissioner Callahan brought up, which is uh, regarding social media. Uh, when I came into the Office of Mayor, transparency was very important to me. Uh, that is why uh, we, moved, we worked very hard to have our meetings taped for the mayor site that I originally had on there um, to outreach to the public, and then we started our town Facebook as well. Um, this was something that I took amongst myself to champion to make sure it was done at that time. I've worked with many boards in the past that frankly, none of them wanted anything to do with it. Um, they were completely fine with the way that it was being run and it really wasn't questioned. Um, and then when we uh, recently got uh, two new elected officials, that changed. And I think um, my reasoning for coming back after a brief hiatus um, was to think about, uh, it's just a new board. We have people that want to be involved now, whereas before, they didn't want to be involved and my um, first reaction was, well, things are being run perfectly the way they are. We currently have three people in charge of the site. If someone wants to post something, just send it to one of those three people. We'll make sure it gets posted. Uh, of course, my, um, at that time, my uh, um, anger, my being upset about it um, is also, I will be frank, that I do have two personal issues with two of the gentlemen that are here tonight that are commissioners. Um, we are moving forward with business. Um, at that time, 
Uh, I reconsidered my decision and came back and decided to turn over the page to the town administrator. Uh, but this was something that I did take personal. It was something that I enjoyed doing. It was something that I loved reaching out to the public. And they're not saying that I can't still do it. They're just saying that there'll be multiple people posting at this time. I also wanted to end this with, uh, my mother came up tonight and commented. Uh, and I will say um, that uh, I wasn't aware that she was coming this evening. Um, and my first reaction was, uh, please leave. Um, so um, I will say um, she has reminded me multiple times that she is also a taxpayer in this town and that she has an opinion. Um, the opinion that she brought forth is just that her opinion. Um, hopefully moving forward in the new year, some personality differences I have with the board members here um, will be fixed. Um, I think that we all believe that Rising Sun um, can be a great place to live. We're all working hard to make it a great place to live. Uh, we have a lot of exciting things to come in the new year, especially with development. Um, and I'm looking forward to moving over this incident of the office. Um, it was just that, a, um, an incident that is a disagreement. Um, and I look forward to moving forward with business. Uh, that concludes my comments. And I will go to Commissioner Altenreath. Uh, I'd like to come back to old business. We jumped over that too quickly. Under old business and speaking of the budget, we still have the outstanding issue of the budgeted monies and the donations for Fall Fest that we need to clear up. I like the word Fall Fest. <laughs> we need to clear that up so that going forward, and first let me preface this by saying, excellent idea. The Davis involved, another excellent idea. It's been well received and it's growing. And as I said, in growing pains, we need to adjust to the growing. We need to know, we know what it cost us the first year. We need to know what it cost us for the second year. And we've been waiting since November 19th for that report. We need that so that we can start thinking of how to adjust. So I will say that I spoke to the town administrator and let him know um, that unfortunately, um, Desiree Davis won't be able to attend an evening meeting. She does have to attend a meeting during the day. I she does have. We know that Desiree dropped off the report on the 19th. She did drop off the report from the 19th. Basically, we have uh, an the records audit were issue, at that an, time. an audit issue that we need to make sure that our accountant, Patty Wagner, is comfortable that money donated was spent where it was supposed to be spent, that those donators were told uh, in a letter, thank you for your donation. We look forward to it again next year. X amount of dollars and it was put toward this. Uh, it's basically just growing pains. It got it was big. If we'd have had a nicer day this year, I think it would have been bigger than what it was. But uh, our representative at the county told us that we've taken residents from other parts. They're not just rising sun showing up for that. They're coming from other parts of the county and they were very impressed. But as it grows, we need to grow with it. We need to budget for it and we need that report. To conclude, um your questioning regarding the report. Uh, a report was given to myself and the town administrator, and in my report, I noticed that there were two missing invoices. Uh, I let Desiree Davis know, and she immediately said, please bring back the invoices to me, myself. Uh, Desiree Davis does have the copies of those um, originals, and she will be putting them back in another packet. I was informed by the town administrator that the entire board wants to meet with her in an executive meeting. I told him at that time that, um, I actually just recently told him that Desiree Davis unfortunately cannot meet at, in the evening, she'll have to meet during the day. So if the majority of the board can meet during the day, then that's fine, but if they cannot. Well, we don't need to meet with Ms. Davis. Okay. This was your project. Okay. Uh, just thank Ms. Davis for her involvement. It couldn't have happened without her. No, it certainly could not have. And we hope that she will continue to be part of it, but as the mayor and the creator of this event, and it's not a big report. We just would need to know for accounting issues and audit and one of our members of Planning and Zoning Board can also, you can talk to her about this, she's in accounting, that we need to make sure that we have uh, done all the proper legal documentation for that event and learn from any mistakes that we may have made. But I totally agree again, with you. Once again, it was a very successful event, two years in a row. And even sure. though it wasn't just for residents of the town of the Rising Sun, I think it was, it was like three years in a row. It's been, it's it was three been years. very successful and grown. Um, 
I will say that um, we'll make sure that we get that report. Uh, hopefully, uh, right after the holidays, we'll make sure that she brings it into the town administrator. And if it is okay with the board, she can meet with the town administrator individually and explain the report to him um, and just hand over those documents. I think uh, I totally understand where you're coming from as far as uh, the missing invoice that was in there. Uh, that is one of the reasons why I called her and said, hey, this missing invoice is here. Uh, let's make sure that all the documents are in order. Um, and she even said in an email that a lot of the delay was just issues that she had. Um, she wrote an email to the board where she stated that, I do apologize, you know, the mayor did ask me to bring these documents together. I've been busy, whatever it was. Right. Um, and, we, and we have that email that she brought it in on the 19th mm -hmm. and it disappeared. I will make sure that she sends a new email to the board stating uh, that. We need you to collect that and report to us. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Commissioner Rothenreith. Commissioner Rothenreith, your comments. I have a letter from KCI. It's basically, um, letting us know that it's okay to go ahead and release funds to our contractor who worked on Ryan Drive. A um, few meetings back, I made a motion and we approved for the payment of, I think it was 66,000, but we have a letter now and I want to make a motion to approve that we go ahead and make payment of $63,000, which will go to Lindstrom Excavating Contractors for the work they were able to do on Ryan Drive uh, before the, the weather and, and many other issues that arose that need to be dealt with um, come up. So I have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. And I have two potential candidates for the Zoning Board of Appeals and we'll be vetting them soon. Thank you, Commissioner Rothenreith. Commissioner Shepard. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Lashier. Alphabetical. My, thank you, Mayor. My apologies if this is under the wrong section. Um, over, over the past couple of months, we've had a lot of ongoing communications with Chester Water Authority. I just wanted to get that out there. Now we're getting to the point of where we can begin to release some of the information. Um, Several weeks ago, Commissioner Rothery and myself actually met with uh, the vice chair of uh, Chester Water Authority here at Town Hall. And then uh, since then, probably around close to two weeks ago, we actually had a meeting with uh, Town Administrator Bonneberger, myself, our attorneys, um, our engineer, and also with Chester Water, their, a member of their board of directors and their solicitor to go ahead and have a uh, well, it's a formal negotiation meeting, and with that, we've actually presented them a, a draft contract, and we're waiting for their response. Um, so that's basically where we're at. We're hoping to get a response from them back in Jan in January, and as soon as more information comes available, we'll we'll present it. Thank you, Commissioner Lucier, Commissioner Shepard. Um, mainly, I just want to talk about. Uh, shop of the cop real fast just to expand on what uh, chief and, and mayor talked about um i would like to thank um mayor marion and commissioner uh warnick for coming out um we did represent very well and thanks for chip for uh coordinating all the police officers we had our entire police department there uh two commissioners and a mayor we were the most represented uh municipality there um we were recognized for that which is a testament to uh the kind of uh, community involvement that we all have. Um, so uh, again, it's a, it's an awesome organization. Uh, there is a long video um, online that actually uh, one of the town residents did, uh, Brad Thompson. Um, he had a drone there and everything, and and took picture or uh, did video of all the police cars, and it's it's really cool. If you, uh, I think the uh, sheriff's office, Caesar County Sheriff's Office, has it on their page. So. Um, but that's basically it for me. I want to keep it short. Merry Christmas, everybody. Commissioner Warnick. I'll uh, keep this fairly short at this point since we're already after 930. Um, we did have a really productive meeting uh, last Monday on the uh, project at Veterans Community Park. Um, it was the kickoff meeting for the uh, stormwater management project that we have going on in behind the Legion fields as well as uh, within the park itself. Um, 
so we're uh, you know pretty excited to we have some pretty good framework in place for how that project's can be handled uh, we should start to see engineering occurring um, or I'm sorry uh, surveying occurring in January within the park so if you see people out uh, doing surveying don't be alarmed um, they're just uh, just for that project you'll also see uh, uh, additional surveying being done for the wetlands delineation so that we can um, get that uh, into place and then once that's completed in addition to being able to apply for the permits for that project we'll also be able to apply for the permits for uh, some of the trail system projects that are going on um, in the same area so uh, with that um, you know we're, we actually went out and did another tour of the site with uh, all the um, people associated with this we had a uh, uh, DNR so Maryland Department of Natural Resources was here um, the representative from the uh, Ocarora Watershed Association, Rupert Rossetti, which uh, many of us uh, know and love. Um, the uh, representative from the Chester Water Authority, uh, Brian Seep, who's the general project manager. Um, we had representatives from Ecotone, as well as, uh, uh, well, the town administrator and myself from the town. And um, I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. I'm a gr uh, oh, yeah, Greg Stickler from the high school. Uh, the high school will be uh, bringing in, I can't forget the volunteers. Uh, most important people. Um, the high school will be using this as an opportunity to, um, the AP Environmental Sciences class will be using this as an opportunity to learn uh, about the project as well as uh, put in volunteer efforts removing uh, invasive species of uh, like Phragmites and garlic mustard and things like that from the area that we're working in. So um, we're excited about the project and uh, we're on schedule with the first kickoff meeting. So. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner Warnick. The last thing I wanted to say before I end this meeting, which I know that you are all ready to go home, and I would have said it in my mayor's report if I would have remembered, um, and she's going to be very upset that I mentioned this, um, is I would say that I have a very odd relationship with Lisa Tome. Um, Lisa Tome is the type of person that uh, one day I could absolutely hate her, and then the next day I could absolutely love her. But the one thing I did want to say is... Um, over 50 kids have, will have a Christmas morning because 61. Of, over 61 kids will have a Christmas morning due to Lisa Tome and her efforts of gathering people to make sure that kids have a Christmas. Um, and this is very important. She was commended by the Conowingo Lions Club for this. Um, and as a Rising Sun resident, um, and as someone who gives me the hardest time of anyone in this room, um, I wanted to say a big thank you on behalf of the town of Rising Sun for all of your efforts. Um, and uh, we thank you. Um, we, we get a lot of that information from your Facebook page. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm going to get I'm a. All of <laughs> I'm getting a. Can I get a motion to adjourn, please? I move we adjourn. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.